Hey, good time of day, everyone. Uh, this, for those who are here, and it seems, wow, there's actually a decent bit of people here already. Uh, well, gosh darn it, thanks for joining us uh, earlier than expected. Um, but that being said, we are going to wait a few minutes, uh, just a few minutes anyways, to allow some people to file in. Until then, uh, I'm going to just take a quick second to let everyone know who I am, if you're new here. Uh, I am, well, my name is Xanalus Grimm. I am a dungeon master from the greater Los Angeles area. I am a massive fan of RPGs, both tabletop and video games. On top of that, um, I'm just a big old generalized nerd of fantasy and sci-fi as a whole. But on top of doing hopefully this every Monday uh, at about the same time, about the same place, uh, you could find me tomorrow as well at about 1.30 p.m. PST to do some more MechWarrior online. Um, so if you're in the mood to shout at some old head truckers and be stomping around in battle mechs, feel free to tune in there. Uh, you can also find me on a few other channels with some of my friends who are here with me right now, but I will let them plug themselves and their streams if they wish, uh, if they want. As such, we will take a few moments to allow more butts to fit into seats, and uh, we'll, I guess, let my friends introduce themselves here. Starting with you, Edward Bosco, take it away. Well, you already know who I am. Hi! You can find me at twitch.tv slash Edward Bosco and at Ed Bosco VA on both Instagram and Twitter. I stream a whole bunch all the time. Uh, obviously, I'm here now on this stream. This is great. But normally, tomorrow, you can catch me playing Halo with the boys. I'm going to let some of my friends talk about that in a bit. Wednesday, obviously, you know, is Unexpectables Day. That's always fun. Thursday is Throwback Thursday, where my friend Bill Rogers and I, the voice of Brock on Pokemon, will play all of the classic games that you've heard of or maybe have never heard of. We recently went through Dragon's Lair, and I got a lesson in what... Uh, uh, Valis was. I had never played that game from the early 90s. It was when I was but a babu. Friday is wrestling. Saturday is Yakuza with my buddy Distortion Devil. Of course, you all know good old Connor. And then on Monday, we just beat Mass Effect. Monty can tell you more about that, but congratulations to Monty on beating Mass Effect. Sounds like we're going into Mass Effect 2. You should check it out. What? That's me. Very cool. Uh, how about you, uh, Monty's good friend Shay? What, what are you I love up to? it. <laughs> uh, I mean, I don't stream. Um, I don't post anything on social media. Well, that's not true. Occasionally, once a year, you might get an art post. Um, God, I wish I was you. <laughs> yeah. Um, but I, I am on on my good friend Monty's oh. channel on Thursday. I didn't I, say it. Don't bully me for it. Come on. <laughs> we're playing the dungeon of the mad mage but you know that's about it i have nothing to plug i'm sorry people i'm boring no, no. I, I live in the real world i don't know <laughs> uh, shay kicks all the ass if you've never heard uh her on mad mage she's fantastic she rolls nothing but 20s somehow on roll 20 <laughs> what do not it's a great jinx time. me <laughs> do not jinx what? me I trust me. I will jinx myself before you. But aside from that, Here we go. Uh, we also have a level one Eevee. Uh, what, what are you up to? Who are you? Uh, I am me. Uh, usually, nice. uh, I also shtick. play on. What? Okay, uh, I'll do that right now. You can find okay. me here. Cool. Yeah. Nice. What? But where would they actually <laughs> find you if they wanted to watch your stream? Uh, I guess level one Eevee on Twitch. Uh, me and Hertz are currently doing like a Solink Nuzlocke. We have missed the last two weeks because we're both bad and lazy. But we're gonna start it up again here soon. I hope. Maybe. Uh, we what also play Tuesdays? Halo. Yep. On Tuesday, Halo, and uh, Mad Mage on Thursday. I've heard of it. It's good. Right. And Monty Glue. Hi. Uh, you can find me uh, at Monty Glue on Twitter. You can find me at twitch.tv forward slash Monty Glue. Uh, God, what day is it today? It's Monday. Uh, where tomorrow and Wednesday, uh, I kind of have nothing going on, but Thursday, Dungeon of the Mad Mage, as previously mentioned. We're in, we're in the thick of it now. Uh, and then Friday is Final Fantasy uh, 14. And then on Monday is more Mass Effect. We beat Mass Effect today. It was an awesome time, we and sure I really did. enjoyed it. Congratulations. And now we get to go into apparently one of the best games ever, so that's going to be really mm -hmm. exciting. And Heartsy, what are you up to? Hey, that's me. I um, I'm streaming on Twitch too. You can find me at at uh, twitch.tv slash artsyheartsy, doing that soul link with Evie. He wants to start it up soon, but Evie, you're going to be away for like two weeks, aren't you? Uh, I'll be away so... for a a week. 
But oh, okay. okay. We can play hashtag that blame if we can find a day. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We'll be doing some Nuzlocke stuff. We we like to uh, mess with it a bit, do some ran randomization and and whatnot. And then yeah, on Tuesdays, Halo streams. Um, we do that too. And I'm trying to squeeze in Sundays for another stream day, Ooh. just for like fun, whatever stuff. I do lots of like emulation and other like weird game challenges. I like to mess with games and make them extra interesting. Um, but yeah, and I do art. Sometimes I'm trying to get back into that. Uh, do you post that anywhere? Uh, well, I want to say Twitter, but I kind of don't want to say Twitter. Yeah. If you know what I mean? Right. <laughs> it's kind of all fallen, falling, oh, man. you know, falling over it's been uh, a day. on Twitter. And Time so I don't know. Time to go back to DeviantArt. Oh, man. <laughs> oh, God, you no. joke, <laughs> but it's actually no. not that bad. Oh, comparatively, uh, especially. I'm just going to, mm -hmm. if, if it's a choice between DeviantArt or anywhere else, I'm going Tumblr. That's fair. Go to her affinity where you belong. Yeah. <laughs> you trash I am a fire. Stinky furry. Alrighty. Well, you're our stinky furry, though. That's true. <laughs> With our above game introductions out of the way, uh, welcome again, everyone in chat. Uh, friends and strangers, I am here to tell you a story. Again, I am Xanalus Grimm. I will be your humble host as we launch into a brand new adventure altogether. And gathered around me, uh, as previously introduced, are a few friends. We have Artsy Hartsy, who is playing the character of Ash. Edward Bosco, who is playing the character of Fenris uh, Karine. Did I say that right? Yeah, close enough. Cool. Uh, Fanfur, also known as Monty's Good Friend Shay, uh, who Hello. will be playing... <laughs> is it Serena or Serena? Uh, Serena. Serena Vanderstar. We have Level 1 Eevee, who will be playing Kanato Yuki. And last on the list alphabetically, but certainly not in matters of friendship uh, or importance, we have Monty Glue, who will be playing Koro Evis or Evis? How do, how do you e want to pronounce Evis. it? Evis. Evis, got it. Koro Evis. Uh, tonight, we start a story that will hopefully whet your appetite for adventure, or at the very least allow you to escape for a few hours. It's the hope. This is uh, the first session, and it's going to be a little bit more narrative-focused uh, before I let the players run wild. But bear with us, Brother. we'll get to the fun parts uh, as soon as we can. And as a very slight heads up, the first part of the content, uh, at least for the first, until around the break, is going to be a little heavy. Nothing too crazy, but uh, I promise we'll get to some some fun laughs along the way. But with all that being said, players, are we ready to begin? Do I start my engine? Players, are we ready to begin? Yes. yes. <laughs> that was my, okay. That sounded like a NASCAR <laughs> reference. <laughs> start your engines. <laughs> I was putting my answer in chat for you, so. Thank you. Oh, fair enough. Yes. <laughs> Also, Zan, question for you. Before we get started, yes. do you want me to call out any of the bits and subs that we've had so far? Um, oh, shoot. Yeah, go ahead and do that. Before yeah, like just real quick. We had NK Draws with a tier one sub for six months. Thank you, Nick. Appreciate you. And Fan First Seeks No Attention with 100 bits saying, let's go. Oh, okay. you, you missed Mark. They subscribe with Prime. Who? Mark. Which one? Mark? Mark. What? No, wrong Matt campaign, Mark. Evie. Silly. <laughs> All right. Anyway. <laughs> okay, we're good to go. Just ignoring them. Yeah. Some music going. Let me know if it's a little loud. Ah. Ooh. Beyond the confines of the mortal realms rests a demiplane that lives isolated and largely forgotten or ignored. Here, floating aimlessly near the astral sea, an errant solar system is found. Planets revolving around an unwavering red sun is connected loosely by ley lines of arcane energy as well as a shared history of trials and pains. For each of these worlds, houses, and housed civilizations once lost time. Entire kingdoms and empires shunted into this demiplane and in an instant left to die for reasons largely unknown to them. And yet, despite this, some survived. They waged war against the strange power that called forth these tragedies and eventually imprisoned the dreaded entity known as the Yellow forever. Now, nearly 20 years later, inside a magical rogue planetoid called Cold Rock, a group of friends begin a journey that will forever change their lives and possibly the very fate of the demiplane itself. Kanato Yuki a sand timer finally fills the bottom of the glass, 
before you realize that the black tea you had made for you, your foster father, and your guest has finally finished steeping. With practiced hands, you bring the finely crafted tea set to your foster's or foster father's bedroom. There you see Giz Helet, the now ancient goblin who raises or helped raise you as his own, sitting up in his oversized bed as he smiles and laughs towards his guest. The guest is someone very familiar to you. A massive and portly human with a huge ginger beard and wild curly hair who sits in fanciful green clothes of an officer. Captain Flint Voidmocker bellows an echoing belly laugh as he places a calm hand onto Gizhelet's shoulder. Captain Flint Voidmaker, or as he insists on you calling him, just Flint, has been something of an estranged family member with you and Gizhelet for as long as you can remember. Despite constantly being called back to fight on the fringes of space against the Eternal Legion, his trips back to Cold Rock are always a joyful time for you and Gizhelet, as he shares his many adventures sailing through the stars. Kanato, you then hear the sound of some distant shouting from somewhere in the busy streets below, as you seem to find and finish placing the tea set on the side of Gizhelet's end table. Captain Flint then seems to stand, towering over most of the room, before closing a nearby window to silence the outside city life. Must be problems down in the cups again, Flint begins to speak. Oh, never mind that, uh, urges Gizhelet. You were saying about the church you found. Oh, I... Flint states before taking his seat back next to you and taking some tea. But I wouldn't call them a church exactly, more like a cult. Uh, they call themselves the followers of the Sanguine Sun, and they managed to hijack a ship of the line from White Fang's fleet, if you believe it. But you sank them into the void then, eh? <laughs> All right, you are, Giz. I would never let anything like that threaten you or Khan ever again. So you needn't worry. But Admiral Whitefang wouldn't let uh, some doom like that come to Cold Rock. Especially not uh, some upstart religious thugs who will burn themselves out in the better part of a month. Flip then seems to sip some tea before giving you, Kanato, a friendly wink. In all my years away from Cold Rock, you've never once asked me to return. I can't imagine you called me here just to learn of some pirates on the edge of space. Aye, you're astute, my boy. Gizalette says while a kind of giving a smile um, through mostly blindish eyes at the bed at the corner of his bed. Um, Kanato, he seems to give you a warm yet concealing smile that with your passive perception you can see is a bit less revealing than he would want. And somehow, this hits both you and Flint like a ton of bricks. As you also notice, Kanato, the captain's eyes begin to well with tears of concern. As you know, the great prophet of Istis told me long ago of which day I am to finally rest. I never told you both when that was, but... But I know that Flint seems to choke up slightly, trying and failing to hold back his emotions. I know that when I lay my head down tonight, that I will dream, a sweet dream, of my late beloved, and I will awaken near her again, wherever she is. But I will never awaken here again. Flint clasps onto Gizhelet's hand, tears fully running down his face. Oh, don't say that! There's still time. I can get a cleric. We can... Gizhelet seems to interrupt Flint with a simple hand gesture. I've lived nearly two lifetimes longer than any of my siblings. I am tired. My body's strength nearly diminished. No potion nor spell can cure old age. Gizhelet looks towards 
you with another warmly sundering smile. You don't see an ounce of fear nor pain in his eyes as he looks towards you with a clarity, Kanato, that you have not seen him have in many years. Boys, <laughs> my boys, I raised you both to accept the end, never to fear it. Just because my book is coming to a conclusion does not mean yours will anytime soon, and nor should it. Tears, snot, and sweat pour down the captain's face as he falls to his knees and hugs Gizhalet while in his bed. Gizhalet sheds a peaceful tear as he weakly embraces Flint and looks towards you, Kanato. The prophet told me that when I went, I would be surrounded by those I love the most in this world. If I could please ask you to retrieve them for me. I would much, very much like to see their faces again. A massive gasp of muffled cries erupts from Flint's face and into the shoulder of Gizhalet. And besides, I think I need a few moments alone with him, Kanato. Kanato, in your mind, you make an immediate list in your head as to where to go and who to find first from the people he's requested and are confident you can complete the task perhaps the last task he will ever ask of you. How do you respond? Well, um... So, it's a lot. <laughs> Sorry. Um, Kanto would, uh, definitely look quite saddened, um, but knowing Giz, that they have definitely prepared for this and they, they know what they're doing so I would I would definitely trust them okay so we just kind of give them a warm smile and uh, I'll be like yeah, I, I can do this I will right. return you gather your things as you see Captain Flint uh, kind of sobbing into the shoulder of your foster father and in a lot of ways his as well um, before you head downstairs towards your well, first person you need to find. And we will pause you there for a moment. Oop, let me deal with the... Let me know if that's a little too high or too low. It's a little low. It's a low. Serena Vanderstar. You and your state do not dream, nor have you ever. You long wondered what uh, that might feel like, but instead you rest in your state, arms across your chest, as you try to recall what little memories you have before your time here at Cold Rock. You remember fighting. You recall the rank and file marches over countless battlefields. Painfully, you also recall the felling of your body over and over and over again. Yet always you returned. Yet always you followed your silent orders to some shadowy yellow master. War was your religion, your life, and your purpose. Until one day, the order stopped. Every day since then, your memory has been crystal clear as a new kind of pain would soon co uh, complement these newly found senses that you had. You found the sunlight would burn and sting your skin as you wandered the many battlefields of long dead. Horrors of the slain tested your resolve as you felt an immeasurable guilt despite having little memory of these places. And as you wandered these horrid halls, you hungered beyond what any food could mortally sustain you. Abandoned and alone on some distant world, one Captain Voidmacher found you in a nearly starved state. He brought you here to Cold Rock, where you've lived under the care, protection, and guidance of Professor Gizhalet for nearly 10 years. All this time, you have struggled to learn how to communicate and how to live 
But with patience and understanding of the professor and his adopted child, Kanato, you have felt far more confident in your abilities as of late. You've even begun venturing out to the various districts of Cold Rock, as no sunlight enters inside the magical metropolis planetoid. Still, while you feel stronger and more informed, you still can't help but feel as though something is missing. It is as though something from the cold of space still calls towards you in a soft, unintelligible voice. Suddenly, your thoughts are interrupted by a gentle knock that rattles the restful state, uh, rattles you from your restful state as you hear the footsteps of Kanato. Kanato, you then see Serena push open her coffin door. Blood drips down her arms from her magical bed that sustains her, as you know she is first of your the four that you must gather. You see each other with clear eyes in the undercroft of Gizhalet's estate. Despite knowing each other in-game, if both of you could please describe your characters for those who wish to simply listen in, um, starting with you, Phoebe. I see. Give me one second. So, Kanato is very uh, similar to that of a, a red fox, but uh, an anthro. Um, I would describe them... Uh, they're mostly red fur across the body, body uh, with markings that are like a grayish white down their chest, legs, and feet. Um, probably the most unique thing about them is they have three tails total, actually. Um, they're all quite fluffy, but well kept. Uh, they're tipped black as well as their ears, and they wear like a loose, uh, like overcoat that's like a uh, light tan color um, with like a stash around the waist that like kind of holds it together with just like general underclothes underneath. All right, and your character shape? Uh, so as she kind of sits up, she has kind of big black voluminous hair that kind of falls down her back um as the light kind of hits it there you can kind of catch a glint of like this reddish glow but it's otherwise pitch black as it comes down uh pale skin that doesn't seem to have like any blush to the cheeks or any life to it and red piercing eyes um she wears dark clothes uh, it looks like a dress at first, but as you see, it kind of falls down past her legs. She does have pants underneath, and it just looks like a very elegant, but again, um, lifeless kind of outfit, almost. Okay. Serena, almost immediately as you kind of look uh, outside your coffin, you see a very somber state that Kanato is in. You've seen... You've somehow sensed the failing health of Gizalet for a few days now, but Gizalet had begged you and pleaded with you to keep his st his state of body a secret. But with Kanato's uh, current posture, you were all but certain that Kanato now knows. Uh, further, if Kanato is here, that likely means Gizalet will want to see all of... Uh, his closest, using air quotes, students on this day, which will likely be his last. Would you like to say anything to each other, or would you prefer to simply somberly march onward? I, I, I kind of give them a, a knowing look, and just... I, I would know that you are very, like, perceptive on these kinds of things. You, If you give me a look in return, I would, I would know you know what needs to be done, but... I'd give you a nod. All right. Kind of a gesture to be like, yeah, I'll go with you. Uh, you both kind of see from outside the croft. It's about um, about midday. Uh, again, the sunlight here being unnatural doesn't really affect you um, as it normally would, uh, uh, Serena. But as you gather your things and move on to the next person that you must gather, we will pause you there for but a moment. Sorry, give me one second. I'm dealing with cat modifiers. <laughs> They're strong. Mine is asleep in my lap right now, my legs falling asleep, and I'm just like, you know, the yeah. Sonic the Hedgehog drowning music that plays? <laughs> That's how I feel right now in my head as my leg is slowly the, falling asleep. The sound that plays as you get closer and closer to drowning is one of the most terrifying and PTSD inducing things ever. 
very true. Um, <laughs> just as a child, I was like, oh god, I need a bubble of air, bubble of air! <laughs> Alright, Nia. Yeah. Koro... Evis? Yeah. From behind your blindfold, you hear a loud, keep your chin down while you swing, or you will be seeing black without the blindfold. Please give me an athletics check. Oh, shit. Okay, hold on. You get the first roll. Yep. I get the first roll of the campaign. Hold up. Sorry, I'm loading up my character sheet. I probably should have had that open. <laughs> it's charging up. <laughs> what roll would you like from me? Uh, if you could give me an athletics. Athletics. Okay. Huh. Not bad. 16. All right. You throw a combination of jabs before clean or cleanly finishing off with a very practiced but strong kick uh, against the target dummy. <laughs> very good. We both know your footwork is fantastic, but it is your endurance now, my son. That is what you must continue to fight for and with. You remove your blindfold to find yourself in the basement of your home. Next to you is your training gear, and sitting next to that rests your father, Tors Enitar Evis. He stretches his huge wings as he finds rest no longer in his humanoid form, but that of his draconic one. Despite the many fears of chromatic dragons, your father has become a beloved and trusted member of the community, and takes time where he can to stretch his wings, especially at home. The eyes of the black dragon are now completely blinded, however, though he still looks towards you with a very warm smile, as you can tell his natural blind sense still allows him to see at least immediately around him or know where people are. Son, one day you won't be compacting and melting trash alongside me. You belong out there. He nods towards you, uh, or rather towards the ceiling clearing in the window. Kicking tails and becoming a name. He hands you a glass of water with his, with his tail. I kind of reach over and I take it. I, I just like, just down the hatch. All like. right. It seems to be cooling off on this very warm day. Just promise me, son, that when you do finally hit that knockout punch, your hand is raised and the bell is rung. Everyone begins to chant your name that you still remember to come visit your mother and dear old father, would you? Of course, I would do this. <laughs> I feel <laughs> like mom would kill me if I didn't. <laughs> True. With a then sudden and quick jab of his winged claw, you manage to block away a practice strike from your father but are unable to avoid a jesting second swing that tassels your hair before your father leaves a... lets out a bellowing laugh. You certainly, you then... have, not, you okay. certainly have not lost your fastness with your age. <laughs> Indeed aren't not, you supposed, Aren't you supposed to slow down as you get older? Well, that's what they tell me. I kind of, like, then... brush his hand off, but, like, kind of give him a smile. You then hear a clearing of the throat that seems to deafen the room. Koro Avis, you hear a stern tone from your mother. Your friends are here. She stands before moving to chastise, seemingly not you, but her husband. And what are you doing in your true form when we have guests over? Your father seems to shrink in his posture slightly. Oh, come on, darling, it's just Kanato, and he then pauses to sniff the air. The undead. He states towards Serena, attempting to get a rise. Koro, you then see your mother's face turn red with her purple hair that seems to become a bit frazzled at your father's apparent rudeness, as standing next to your mother are two figures, politely or perhaps quietly waiting behind her kind of a smallish form. Kanato and Serena, you both know uh, or you both know this figure that you stand behind as Kolani Avis, a succubus potion maker of intimidating presence. 
she has always been kind to both of you, and while you have seen her uh, have a very passionate and loving relationship with her husband and son, you've also noticed that uh, the husband can be an expert at pushing people's buttons for no other reason than to try and get some friendly jabs in. Koro, you know your parents obviously all too well, but can't help but feel a little bit of embarrassment towards the emanation of your mother's face and the smug looking smile on your father. Oh, Kalani God. is that flirting again. Kalani then seems to gesture towards both uh both Kanato and Serena to enter the training room uh with Koro before she moves over towards Tors, um as she tends to call him, grabbing him by the horns and forcing him to transform back into his humanoid body and then dragging him into the other room by his ear, more frustrated than anything else. And for the sake of the audience, Monty, could you please describe your character? Okay. Uh, Koro uh, is a average height individual. Uh, his most distinguished features is that he has uh, the torso of a kind of a tiefling with a somewhat translucent chest and belly where you can kind of see the bones. Uh, he has long, kind of purple black hair, um, very angular features of grays and blacks, and two curled horns that run past his head. His hands and his legs betray his more draconic nature with a long tail, uh, as well as a set of wings that start from the kind of mid back that flow behind him, more like a cape than actual wings. He also wears a uh, very elaborate attire of kind of coppery, uh, draconic embellishments that he's made out of trash, as well as just, you know, loose athletic gear that he seems to prefer. Okay. Uh, Kanato and Serena, you both shudder at the thought of needing to tell Koro of your purpose here, but you do understand it is an important one. Koro has been an avid student of Gisalet and has been a close friend with uh, Kanato for most of both of your lives. Uh, Koro, in fact, was the only one brave enough uh, to escort you, Serena, on your first trip outside of Gisalet's home. Yet still, you both know that he should be told why you are here and what it is you need of him. I'm gonna okay. look to look to you uh, with my ears like pinned back. Like, oh no, handle this one. You... Your ears are pinned Not back. Pleasant news. I mean, you look more dour than usual. No offense. And when your ears are pinned back, that usually means something bad is about to happen. <sighs> that would be correct. I mean, that's that's one way of putting it, but. I, I think uh, for now we should. Uh... <sighs> it's it's Giz. Uh, oh, uh, I, I see. I put down the glass that I drank from, and kind of like just quickly peek to see if the parents aren't watching, and then I kind of nod towards the other two, like let's get out of here. Poro, as you kind of put the glass down, check to make sure the coast is clear. You kind of are able to put two and two together, knowing that Gisalet has been weaker and weaker as the months have gone on. Um, you kind of understand why your friends are a bit more somber. But as you fully gather your effects, uh, you see your parents have returned to the door, blocking you out of the makeshift dojo. Uh as you see, Koro, you see your mother uh, hand you a basket that is full of Gisalet's favorite incense and wine. As she looks towards you, tell Gisalet, and we love him for us. Will you, Koro? Of course, Mama. With two gathered, and two still yet to remain, you head towards the Cups District to find the next person that Gizalette would wish to see. We'll pause you there for a moment. Artsy, you there? Yes. Ash. You lift Remington, your pet mouse, triumphantly in the air before placing him and the small bit of shiny string that you brought onto your lap. The small shiny bit and bob seems to appease your eyes as you then put it into your jewelry box. 
Inside is the beginnings, of course, of your mighty draconic horde. You aren't exactly sure why, but every small bit or bob that you find uh, here seems to fill you with satisfaction. You remember, or at least think you remember, that having massive piles of wealth in your honor was normal somehow, even if it is small right now in this tiny wooden box. You faintly also recall the joy of flying through the clouds and uh, perhaps one time even dive bombing through to stop a wedding to save a groom from his would-be tragically unwanted arranged marriage. But every time you laugh at these thoughts and what feels like memories, you your mind then slowly fades back to recalling far more painful ones. Something of a difficult thing to fully place its origin. But in clarity, you do remember all of that seemed to change the day that you woke up in the void of space, alone and in the current form that you possess, trapped but somehow alive. You remember Admiral Whitefang saving you from the void, bringing you here towards Cold Rock. Here, you were taught how to read, to write, and how to survive in Cold Rock by Professor Gisellet. You remember the many pranks and shenanigans you and the professor's son would get into, and how annoyed Kanato's friends would get at some of your antics. But overall, your time here in Cold Rock has been a friendly one, and a pleasant one. Still yet, you look over your dwellings, um, and do not see an opulent palace, but instead a dirty alleyway. You've had plenty of offers to stay in some place nicer, but for some reason you feel compelled to make cave-like nests in dark places or roost someplace high and outside in the cold. But above all that, you can never seem to not eat people out of house and home, a hunger that just seems never-ending in comparison to your friends. And as such, you've learned to not be a picky eater these days. But while you enjoy reconnecting uh, with your past, at least for what you remember it, you also do enjoy remembering your time with Kanato, Serena, Koro, and uh, what was his name? A twinge of hunger seems to warble through your stomach and interrupts your train of thought. You owe a lot, after all, to the people who helped acclimate you to Cold Rock, and you hope that one day, uh, you can repay their kindness, but at the same time, you also hope to venture the stars and perhaps find your lost horde. But for now, this tiny wooden box will have to do. Remington, your only loyal soldier, squeaks as you see three figures appear at the end of the alleyway. Some friends! Though they don't seem nearly as somber, they don't seem nearly as playful, but more somber. Um, at the at the current moment. For the audience, Hartsey, would you mind describing your character? Sure. So, um, Ash is, appears to be a, a dashing half elf with, um, but with uh, like sharp, ridged horns protruding from their head and um, like a slender, scaly tail from their lower back. Um, they have gray skin that seems to have a subtle metallic sheen to it and, um, very long, uh, bright blonde hair. Um, their eyes are a sharp yellow, um, seem to glow. Um, they have rept reptilian eyes. Um, their clothes also are simple, but seem to be somewhat elegant. Um, they wear like a, a simple sh cold shoulder top, but notably have a um, a bright sky blue shoulder cape and these large leather boots with really thick high heels on them. Um, and and normally they carry themselves with a, a, an air of confidence, but um, upon seeing the three of you can tell that maybe something's up. Uh, as such, Kanato, uh, Serena, and Koro, you see the strange self-made vagabond that is your 
somewhat mischievous friend, and know that unfortunately you will have to break some rather bad news. Would you like to do a scene, or would you prefer to have uh, explained along the way to your next destination? I don't mind. Me. Go ahead. Uh, so you guys want to move just to the next one and kind of assume that you talked along the way? Sure. Yeah, I guess so. I thought that <laughs> <laughs> you said go ahead. I thought that he was doing a scene. <laughs> no worries. Um, we can just move on ahead. Fenris Karane. Crossing the holy symbol of Bacab, you pray for the souls lost and damned forever, banished somewhere into the arcane. It has been two decades since that unspeakable day, and many years since you have been in your homeworld of Kasvai. While you are proud that you defied your people's neutrality and fought against the yellow, you are still suffering from these effects, this uh, strange moment that you never thought you'd be in going against your people. You, in fact, still mourn the millions lost at the Battle of Hinan and somewhat blame their inaction for it. You remember the hopelessness that you felt at the hands of the Yellow's legions, despite even the mighty Captain White Fang and his crew being powerless to stop the death of an entire planet, you still wish to redeem the near countless dead from that day. There, on that planet, was that dreaded evil that decimated nearly all life in but a few moments before raising them into the ranks of the undead. You were there, on planet, a part of the very few who escaped, though parts of you still seem to linger there. You brush your hand over a series of scar marks across your body, uh, body as barbed chains from the legion, legionary's hooks are still magically fused and broken up into pieces across your back, stomach, and arms, and a metallic patchwork that seemed to be immune to any magical mending. But these have all been the least of your concerns, despite the uncomfort it still produces. For even after you helped escort the displaced people of Yunnan to their new home on Slegmark, you seemingly could not find peace nor shelter anywhere. Your body and your mind began to slowly deteriorate until, by chance, you were found by, an, by a kindly old goblin and his adopted child. Here on Cold Rock, you have been under the therapeutic care of Professor Gisellet. The professor has been instrumental in aiding you in your once shattered mental state and helped guide you into a new life of meditation and careful reflection. If you could not save those on that fated day, you were taught that you could at least try to save yourself and let the Yellow's evil claim not you or anyone else that they can as well. You swore you would protect professors, the professor's child and the students in repayment for seemingly your rebirth of self, but Gisalet politely refused any gesture of the sort. Cold Rock can be a dangerous place, of course, and the Professor still is convinced that to survive Cold Rock and to brave its harsher shot sides is to be a part of Cold Rock. While you have always questioned that logic, you nonetheless respect his viewpoints, even if you do still check in on the younger ones from time to time. You then ready yourself for another day of reflection and meditation when from behind you, and the center of the temple door, you hear the same younger folks that you had just recalled to your memory. As they approach, you look over and see that they seem to be bothered and mournful as you slowly place or piece two and two together. Again, would you guys like to have a scene with each other, or do you want to just move on to the next uh, destination? I'd love to have a scene if somebody wants to talk to me. Oh, oh, also, um... This, yeah, good job, Shay. I'm so glad we're playing together. <laughs> it was so great. I regret this already. 
uh, you guys will all see uh, a what looks to be an elf-like creature. You will see with his shirt off that there are those hooks and unnatural bumps and rocks in his skin. And as he hears people approaching, he will quickly uh, put a shirt back on. Uh, you will also notice that he throws up a hood of a purplish and gold hue. You will also see to the side of him large plates of armor decked out in gold and purple trim, uh, some silver bits still throughout the armor, uh, as well as a purple robe-like shawl that looks like it could be fastened uh, to his waist. Uh, however, it looks like all of his equipment is currently off of him as he was getting ready to meditate. As you all approach, he opens his eyes and turns back to look towards all of you, and you all see the familiar look of those not quite hollow eyes, but the starry images within them, almost like little constellations within his uh, eyes where irises would normally be. And as soon as he notices your demeanors, you will watch what was at first a smile kind of start to fade from his face as he almost expects the news that is about to be given to him. We must well, interrupt you. Yeah, it's not great, but um, it they, they seem to have a plan. So if you, if you can come with us to to visit Giz, maybe for the last time, you it, be prob joining a, um, a cortege of sorts. You know, it's funny that no matter how many times he told me this day would come, I never thought it would actually come. All right. I will gather my things. Uh, you notice he very somberly starts to pick up his armor, but doesn't take the time to actually put it on. He just starts carrying it and will walk with you. Okay. I'll move you guys over to the map of Cold Rock real quick. Map! <gasps> Indeed. Map. Oh my goodness. Moving from the temple and closer towards um, a kind of nicer part of town, you walk towards, uh, as a group, towards Professor Gisalet's home. Living in the Stairs District of Cold Rock, uh, you all know, it offers many privileges. For one, each street is higher than the one before it, offering each home an arena-like view of the busiest streets of Cold Rock. The professor lives in one of these such homes, near the lower end. Most of Cold Rock is on a flat plain in the center of a cave-like planetoid. There are docks that lead outside to the void, where many ships would dock, but there are also mines of shunted in lumber and iron and other resources. Ancient arcane enchantments seem to keep this place alive, and uh, you seem to understand that these enchantments make his make this place livable as much as they one can be as much as one can live in such a place from inside cold rock a magical sigil in the shape of a sun casts a light over the ceiling of cold rock giving everyone inside it a sense of night and day seeing even occasional magical clouds kind of drifting over a 2d plane on the ceiling with that being said, however, it would appear that you're approaching the evening as you all slowly enter um, single file into Professor Gisellet's home. In front of you and in the front room, you all see Captain Flint Voidmarker, uh, Voidmacher taking what appears to be a breather near the front window. He's in the room. Yes. I should just see you all. I'll... I'll be in shortly. He stands towards the group, very, very somberly, as though he has had a rather difficult few hours. Do you all enter the room? Uh, before yeah. that, I would like to walk up and give him a hug and be like, I know we haven't seen each other much in these recent years, but I appreciate you being here. Thanks, Guns. He says, kind of giving you a pat on your back lowering kind of his body to, to kind of reach you. <laughs> I 
and then I'll head into the room. As you all slowly make your way into Professor Gisela's bedroom, you find him sitting upward uh, at the edge of his, well, the head of his bed, uh, still covered mostly in his blankets. While he has always seemed vulnerable um, and venerable to all of you, he looks particularly time-ravaged today. But you do hear aloud, uh, somewhat despite this, Good, good, I'm so glad you've all come, Kisalet says, uh, with quite a gleeful tone to his voice. And around the bed, you see six chairs, um, each with a handkerchief on them and a fresh glass of water. Please, please, have a seat. Oh, uh, uh my mother uh, wanted you to have this. Oh. And I will hand him the basket of incense and wine. I am so deeply honored. Thank you very much. Would you mind being a dear and lighting the incense for me? Uh, absolutely, sir. And I will take it and begin to place it and I will light it. Lighting the incense, um, you get a strange sense of calm. You expected a... Well, Koro, you weren't sure what to expect, to be honest, in the situation, but... Be anything with my mom, man. <laughs> anything. <laughs> but you find, despite how heavy the situation might be uh, the professor seems calm almost serene even his presence you can't help but all feel seems to calm you down as best it can given the situation as all of you slowly find your seats as you undoubtedly know by now i am old <laughs> uh, so old in fact that i do not believe I shall see another sunrise. But I call you here not to try to prevent my fate, nor to hope that you suffer from it, but instead I wish to celebrate what few moments we have left and what small smiles I can give you I have left to share. He then looks towards each of you with a smile. Specifically, his eyes lock towards Fenris. My dear friend, I am so proud that you have seemed to claim your life and reimagine it in whatever way you seem fit. Not all survive the tragedies that you have. Even after such terrible events, you try to find strength. I know in your heart you wish to see some sort of justice for those who could not be saved, and that you seek to redeem yourself for feeling that you failed them somehow. Uh, while I have seen you make such great strides in your recovery, I must also promise you this, dear friend. He kind of grabs towards your hand, Fenris. The Fenris pain that you carry... Out. The pain that you carry, it can never truly be erased. It can only be made into something new. He then takes his hand away from your hand and points towards the bottom of your seat. Beneath your chair, you will find a hammer. I ask that you try, if you can, to, to build anything and everything that comes to your mind. Build others as much as you've torn yourself down and let others help you rise to higher heights of clarity and strength. He smiles towards you. Can you do this for me? Fenris will, as he says, building back as much as you've torn down, he will slowly take a look to each person around the circle, starting with Ash and then to Kuro. A little bit of a narrower sight at Serena and then finally kind of looking at Kanato that's when Giz will see just a single tear without even blinking just kind of roll down his cheek and Fenris will simply nod thank you my friend he then seems to look towards you Ash before pinching your hand softly oh my silver hearted friend 
I am ever so happy to have met you and to have known you. You are so youthful and creative and always so full of life. You hear a small squeak from your pet mouse Remington. And you as well, of course, he laughs before nodding. And while I know you yet struggle to find your power, I have no doubt in my mind that you will find what you seek. He then points towards Remington. But if your little friend has proven anything, it is that you are never powerless, so long as you surround yourself by those who care for you. Gizalette then looks around the room before looking back towards you, and hands you a strange pennant from his end table. The pennant itself seems to be that of platinum, and it sports seven golden canaries around its edges. This, I hope, may help you find what you seek. Or, if <laughs> nothing else, uh, hopefully it will be a nice trophy for your horde. He smiles towards you. Uh, Ash will, will take it um, and is, is visibly trying not to cry um, and will simply say thank you. He nods in acceptance. I give you this, of course, free of charge, but I still have one final request of you, dear friend. No matter where you decide to spread your wings, I ask that you keep those who care about you as close as you possibly can. You may have been found alone out there in the void of space, but I know, without being a prophet of Isthis, that that will not be your fate again. Can you do this for me? Ash will nod really enthusiastically, um, seeming like, you know, maybe they, they can't quite find the words. You see Remington sort of move towards the chair, grab the handkerchief, and move it to help uh, kind of clean up your face. And as you kind of calmly sit back down in your chair, you see Kisalet look towards you, Koro. Koro has their fingers kind of pressed together and is kind of leaning forward and is looking a little forlorn, not making full eye contact. My dear Koro. <sighs> You are so strong, even at such a young age, you... It makes me so happy to see you and your family strongly thriving here in Cold Rock. And I foresee many adventures and triumphs in your life. You have such a loving family, but I know that they are not the only ones who believe in you. On Cold Rock or even beyond, there are so many things to fight for. So many causes to find. I had so many reasons to find passion in the struggles of others. I see such a desire to find that strength in yourself and to conquer problems that you cannot even know of yet. And above all that, I am, I am so proud to have been a small part in your life and hope that you never lose that spirit that tells you to never stay down. He then points towards the spot beneath your chair. I'll slowly kind of trepidatiously reach underneath and grab whatever it is. Beneath your seat, uh, you will find a handbook that even I could not uh, legibly fully understand, admittedly. But inside contains a test, perhaps. Uh, notes of... Uh, I presumed to be the greatest warrior of Cold Rock ever has produced, of uh, Portmaster Kernesh. It is uh, seemingly notes of uh, not only his adventures, but uh, ways to fight and uh, techniques and stories that, uh, to the best of my ability and everyone I had known, I cannot decipher, but I have a feeling somehow you will. And... I have no doubt that the knowledge that you will gain will aid you. I kind of skim through the pages loosely and go. As you look through, 
it looks like strange squiggles and harsh lines that go in random directions with occasionally a, a dragon head severed and thrown into a pile and a, just strange doodles that don't seem to make any sense. You can you know Portmaster Karnesh is a very, very old orc, um, but none of the writing seems to be in any orcish or language that you would identify written on cold rock. I kind of, you know, cutting through the sadness, there's a little bit of a curt smile on Koro's face. He goes, leave it to you to give me homework. <laughs> yes. And I am certain that this is, this test will be worth your time, no matter how long it takes you to defeat it. But my final request to you is not to turn in this uh, homework, but to never give up that side of you that tells you to keep going. Rest, regroup, reevaluate, and be vulnerable when you need to, of course, but don't let anyone ever tell you that you're down for the count, as you always have. Your friends, family, and you yourself will need that strength from you in the time to come, I'm certain of it. And I'm sure that you will rise to the challenge that life has ahead of you, even if it does take a few tries to get there. I will do you proud. <laughs> you already have. He then looks towards you, Serena. Hello, oh, dearest Serena. The name Vanderstar that you share, the end, as one of heavy history. Many will never look at your likeness kindly, I will admit, even here on Cold Rock. Those who know the history of your name and who you are, or what you are rather, may judge you harshly. Others will attempt to define you on what they feel you are alone. In the short time, admittedly, I have known you, you've already made so much progress towards bettering yourself. But as you better your future, I still believe you have a right to know your past that has been robbed of you, if you wish. He then points towards the bottom of your chair. That arrived yesterday morning. Serena kind of looks a little uncomfortable, like she's trying to hide emotions, but it, there's like a twitch, and she kind of leans over and tries to, you know, right, right herself as she reaches below her chair. Okay. Yeah. Uh, as you reach below your chair, you pick up a black leather bag. It seems to be a little bit larger than your palm, and on the front of it, it is engraved in a strange metal you can't quite identify seems to be the symbol of a crowned falcon. You look towards it and feel strange twinges of connection that you can't quite identify. I know not where this may lead you, Serena, but my request of you is that no matter what you find or where you go, I hope that it is you who decides what you are and what you will become, not others. Can you do this for me? I admit that it has been difficult for me, but I shall try to do this for you. <laughs> that is all I ask. He then looks over with a smile towards you, Kanato. You always did keep me waiting till last. <laughs> well, you've always been so patient. And admittedly, Kanato, I have always been so selfish with you. I have seen a light that you bring and the joy that you create from seemingly nothing. And I have been the sole arbiter of those gifts to others that you so easily provide to most of in your life. You have hidden yourself away from the world, and I have respected your wishes to reserve yourself overall with those of Cold Rock and beyond. But those who you have chosen to open up to, these special few around us now, have seen fonts of near endless hope of, and guidance as I have, then points towards the corner of the room. 
a gift for you. Looking behind, you see a strange weapon, a bow of sorts that has two strings lined around it with gold filigree around a wood that you can't quite identify its origin. This bow, Kanato, belonged to your parents, your true-born parents. And I believe that you are ready for it now. To see the worlds beyond and the realm between realms and all it has to offer. But there are many shadows that cover the once bright lights of this place. Many of which that need, of course, to be uncovered for the greater good of those who suffer from that shadow, but also for the greater good of us all. I only ask of you, dear Kanato, that when you find those shadows that would reveal something that should remain hidden, you find that rare bit of wisdom that you possess to know what must be told and what must be forgotten. This is my final request of you, dear Kanato. And no matter how dark things get, you no longer hide the light that is inside you. And you know the right and wrong things to reveal. Kanato will walk over to the bow um, and kind of look down at it and then slightly shake their head and be like, I'll... I'll I'll take it tomorrow. I, I want today to be about you and not them. <laughs> of course, of course. Now, if you have any final uh, needs of wisdom from me, I suppose now would be the time for it. As all of you see uh, Captain Flint Voidmarker walk in with a massive platter of crumpets and cookies from a nearby bakery, kind of placing it on the foot of the oversized bed for any of you to partake in if you wish. But even you like to have a scene with each other or with uh, Gisalet? Uh, I'm gonna. Oh, go ahead. All right. Um, I was gonna just kind of go over and just uh, grab like three and immediately like hand them over to. Uh... Oh goodness. Names. I should learn them. That's why you gotta write them down in your notes. <laughs> Kanato, Serena, Koro, Ash, Koro, Ash Fenris, gonna hand, a, hand, a, hand three <laughs> immediately over to Ash. Oh yeah, because Ash is probably hungry. <laughs> two, two for you, one for uh, your your little friend there. Ash will, you will take him. them and um, and give a whole cookie to Remington. Uh, Remington will respectfully but gleefully begin to chow down on the the small treat. I'm not feeling particularly hungry, but I know you're. Yeah, I There's don't know a time what to call place. it. But uh, uh, I'm just gonna sit down. I need I need a moment. I uncork the wine and begin to pour some glasses. As you do, you notice the delight on Gizhalet's face as he smells the slowly decanted wine uh, something of a specialty that your that your mother seems to find no one else on cold rock seems to be able to produce um as you kind of pour it you see even captain flint void mocker a now seemingly legend amongst uh cold rocks inhabitants seems to also cheer up at the fact that you found wine where no one else could it's not too freaking that my mother would bring out things like this, but I don't think it would go to waste. And I hand uh, a cup of wine to Flint, and I, I offer a very generously filled cup of wine to uh, my old teacher. Yes, Alette takes it with, with glee and begins to slowly sip at it, seemingly sitting back uh, in his bed and just smiling and appreciating everyone in the room. Anyone else want some poison? <laughs> I kind of jostle the bottle a little bit, just trying to add, you know, just a little bit of levity to probably the rather dour sort of, you know, quiet scene. It would mm. seem that the, the spread of treats and the arrival of Flint seems to have 
lifted people's spirits at least a little bit. I meekly ask for for one. Bosco, you said you wanted to do something. Your time, friend. <sighs> there was a time where I asked if if you needed me to watch over them, and you said no. And now you tell us to smile in the face of overwhelming sorrow, and I see those that can, I see those that struggle too, but how am I supposed to smile right now? I don't ask that you uh, fake your emotions. I never have. <laughs> In truth, you're not a very good liar. <laughs> but all I ask is that you could try to look at things a little differently. For I have one final gift from Cold Rock laid at my feet. I know of which the way I must go and win and I choose to be surrounded by those I love most that I still have. And I understand that that still might mean that things are difficult for you, but at the very least see that I know of no better way to go. Fenris will kind of blot his eyes again. <laughs> Wise beyond your years. Still. <laughs> How many years they are, friend. Yes. You will forgive me if I, at some point in the near future, break this promise of constantly smiling, but for today, while you are here, I will do my damnedest. I know that my students, yourself included, are in good hands, not only in Cold Rock, but under your protection and watchful gaze, as I know that you still look after them, even though I did not want you to. I am certain that they can come to you for guidance, and if need, protection. Then I suppose I should drink. <laughs> yes, a drink. Cheers, old friend. Kanato, I'll have one if you're offering. Oh, um... I'll just give you my glass and go get a new one. <laughs> I will pour us another. And I pour another glass and hand it to Kanato. Serena, you look down at the bag that kind of sits in your hands. This old leather. You can't help but not only feel a connection to it, but twinges of iron seem to meet your nose from somewhere inside the bag. Looking casually into it, or at least the, the top of it, you don't get a sense that anything is in it, however. But you look towards the crowned falcon, then towards Gizhalet, who seems to acknowledge your perceptions and give you a simple smile. I feel that I will be more lost from this moment than what I was before. A wise thing to fear. But look around you, dear Serena. You are not alone. You have these friends all around you. They will help guide you. Yes. I suppose I should have more faith in that guidance. <sighs> Perhaps I shall take a drink as well. Not too much. It doesn't do too well to your constitution, of course. <laughs> no, but for the occasion, I feel that it is appropriate to at least have a sip. Hmm. Uh, you all partake in various beverages, uh, some tea, some wine, some 
sweet treats as you can as the night, this final night, eventually does come to an unfortunate but happy conclusion. It is some days later, some difficult days later, despite how prepared Gisalet tried to bring you, before a darkened day, all of Cold Rock's sigils are lowered in their illuminations as the entirety of the city mourns. You find yourself outside the funeral of the late professor. Surrounded are everyone that you could imagine here, all the important movers and shakers, but also friends of the professor. Portmaster Kurnesh stands uh, alone, mighty, and somehow even older than the professor was, shedding still a mighty tear past his orcish constitution and his white, uh, long hair and beard. Next to him, Amor, a warforged master of magic who keeps the runes constantly moving and uh, working seems to finally not be busy for a moment to pay a few moments of respect at the professor's funeral. Next to them, Admiral Whitefang, a massively tall were-lion of white fur, uh, seems to look down towards the casket of, uh, of the professor, kind of placing a calm hand and a smile as though years of adventures and wisdom had been shared between the two. Next to them, Kanato, you see a elf, though not one that looks like your friend, a different elf, uh, one typically referred to as a high elf. You remember the professor speaking to this person and calling them the name Avari. They seem to be having difficulty composing themselves and keeping together, but still remain here alongside the various companions of Admiral Whitefang. And next to them, you see two drow captains, one of Viscera and Veldrin. Massive and legendary are their exploits around Cold Rock in the Realm Between Realms, but here they have chosen to worn more quiet and somber clothes. And lastly, of course, next to them, Koro, you see your parents. Your father doing his best to maintain his humanoid form, um, holding your mother's arm as they seem to wear all black. A few prayers are given as the casket slowly lowers into the void of Cold Rock's center. Shortly after, you see Captain Flint Voidmacher move over towards the front of the procession. He seems to clear his voice, drinking some small drinking from some small metallic flasks before looking over the crowd. <sighs> Thank you all for being here. I know... I know all of you know. I knew the professor. And... He has helped so many of us uh, here in attendance and beyond. But for me, most of my life, he has been the only family I've ever known. I had the honor and the privilege of knowing Gesselet. He was the father I never had, and the best friend I always wanted. The most trusted confidant in my life. He was the best man at my wedding, and was the last one to leave me during her funeral. He seems to choke up again. We shared so many tears, and laughs, and stories. But he always, no matter how grievous his wounds, no matter how deep his losses found the impossible path of listening, teaching. He was, of course, known for his many tomes that he had written and font of intellect that he would share. However, as one who has seen uh, one end of this plane to another, never have I met another with such wisdom, poise, and patience that he had. On his last day, he wished to see those he cared about most. And on his last day, he gave 
his final words as guidance and hope. For Gizalet was a lot of things, but one of the things he was most proud of was being a historian of Cold Rock. I grew up learning everything there was to know about this place, and we all call it home, but he knew this place in and out. This floating debris of a world that was founded by lost souls that were shunted by the yellow and left to die. Their descendants thwarted over a hundred invasions of this place, and to this day, not a single force has ever taken over the stalwart souls who defend Cold Rock. His last words in this world were simply that, whispered into my ear. Stalwart souls, a promise, and a plea. That is what inspired him in life. And that, dearest friends, he then looks towards you, Kanato, for a moment, and family, is something that we must keep close to him in his honor. But as much as we must mourn, please, for the sake of his last words, let us remain as vigilant, as vibrant, and as lively as we've ever been. No matter what you find out there, no matter what challenges you face, remember you are all of Cold Rock, and you are all his stalwart souls. You all take a few moments, as especially for you, Kanato, time seems to slowly draw on. And over time, the procession, the mourning, and the well, group of people slowly evaporate back into Cold Rock. And over time, you hear the busy streets go back to work, and people continue their day to day. But surrounding you still are your friends. Looking up, however, Kanato, you do not see Flint. Seemingly, he went rather quickly with Admiral Whitefang to address some form of emergency, but unfortunately he couldn't give you more than a passing nod and hug. You all gather around Kanato, uh, trying to console him in this quiet moment, when all of a sudden, someone seems to approach the last of this procession. A taller figure, one of about six foot, uh, in some change, inches, walks towards you with a metallic mask. His skin is red of sorts. His mouth seems to be connected to a strange cold iron device that m m seems to echo out whatever his language would be into something more easily readily known into Abyssal, the common language of Cold Rock. And as a figure approaches, you see it take off its hat. To you and only you, Koro, you recognize this as a fiendish devil, one typically referred to as a Maragon, a rather tall legionnaire of the legions of hell, though clearly reformed if they live here in Cold Rock. As they take their hat off, you see behind them two larger imps uh, in seemingly fine clothes, kind of keeping well behind him. Uh, I apologize, uh, Master Kanato, was it? Yeah. Apologies for your loss, but um, I am unfortunately going to have to be the bearer of uh, difficult news. Uh, your um, adopted father uh, made the gods find his soul. He, unfortunately, towards the later part of his life, owed quite a bit of money. And while the portmaster has waived many of those um, those debts, unfortunately, what could not be waived was his home. So I must ask that uh, you vacate the premise within 24-ish hours. Great. Fenris is going to step up to this gentleman. How You said he was about six feet tall? Yep. Um, he's going to look directly into his eyes and try to get him to look away from Kanato. 
the figure looks over, though you see a metallic mask looking at uh, at you kind of directly. You notice the two larger imps kind of standing up as though they're kind of ready to intervene if they need to. Pardon me, good sir, but I don't know if you've noticed. But this is a moment of mourning, and you thought that this of all moments would be the time to alert him to this? Perhaps another day. I understand. I still don't quite understand the cultural significance of such uh, days, but I unfortunately am contracted to fulfill these obligations. However, um, he sort of looks around and motions for the, the two larger imps to take a few steps back. I am not without the reason. My name is Lavo Zulek. I'll give you guys the, the name. The I was going to say, if you could spell that, please. Uh, one second. What? Aha. Oh, I, was, I was so close. I'm impressed, I Monty. I was not even remotely close. <laughs> I am. Literally, I did an S instead of a Z. Oh. This guy, this guy already has the uh, brackets asshole next to his name. <laughs> I, yeah, seriously. I was about, I'm like, man, I'm about ready to die session one. Here we go. I am the tax collector of the, you know, the downtown of Cold Rock, and it is my job to give the unfortunate news when something is too far owed and must so, be redeemed. Have you ever heard the phrase shoot the messenger? Because. I you're you're stepping right into that role. Oh my God! You could not be stepping more into that role. Uh, uh, yes, I have been warned that the others would be very fiery at news. But as I mentioned before, I am not without uh, some reason. I can delay such effects, such needs, if I can uh, request a favor in exchange. On whose behalf are you gathering this debt? Uh, go ahead and give me anyone who wants to um, a... Uh, oh my god. What is the, the skill? History? Uh, history no, religion? not history. Oh, okay. uh, insight, that's the one. Insight. Oh. Oh, I good. would love to. Yeah, let's go. Yeah, I would love free. to. Yeah. It would I'm be my pleasure. Be oh, 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 that's appropriate. Oh, oh boy. Well, oh, good insight too. See what yeah. had happened was Fenris, uh, as well as Koro, you're more, I would imagine, angry at this figure to fully mm -hmm. get a good read on them, especially because they have a metallic mask for a face. Yeah, tail's twitching a little bit. Just a little the rest bit. of you uh, notice the taxman seems to be wearing an official badge, but also seems to produce in Infernal a letter of writ officially showing that he is the official tax collector signed by the portmaster of Kurnesh. He does seem to be official. That almost makes it worst. It, 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 okay. If so, you could hear at least the proposition out before making any sort of mind. I will not hold you to agree to it. However... They're part of why the expenses must be moved so quickly within the apprehension of this estate is because the downtown district is having issues paying some of the guards to investigate the happenings within the Cubs district, uh, the border part of Cold Rock. If you would investigate a particular disturbance and remedy it, then I would be able to delay the paperwork for at least a week or two before it must be processed. And what good would that do us? And I would at the very least allow you to find ways to pay for the estate. And just... just... what's the number? I can write up the contract right now if you wish, but it is quite expensive right now. I... I, I, I imagine I can't afford it, but it'd be good to have, like... You know, like an end goal uh, or a number in mind. He points towards uh, the amulet that uh, Ash seems to have. 800 of those.
That was a platinum pendant that he had, right? Yes. Cool. 800 platinum? Uh, like 8,000 gold, probably more Good for the house. God. I mean, it's a house. It is a house. And the stairs is a nicer district within... And Zan is Zan is from LA, so his understanding of house pricing <laughs> is higher. It's and very thus, definitely you know. inflated. <laughs> Sorry, I'm bring, I want to bring. Some oh, you're okay. You're, okay. you're not wrong just though. Died, man. You're not wrong at all. Died. Yeah, I love, I love Zan. Well, the it's, gonna heavy, it's gonna be a heavy first session. A, 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 your father dies. Hi, I'm the debt collector here to take your fucking father's shit. Man, yep. Evie gets no breaks on this. No train. breaks for Evie. Oh my lord! Dude, this, I uh, ruined my note that Kanato needs to move. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, I... also Serena, that also means you. You live under the 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 basement of the estate. Oh my god! Oh, oh, no, 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 I got to move. I was gonna say, uh, did you forget where you rules, lived? Dude. Uh, I have a half question half. for you, Zen. It was investigative disturbance in where? The Cups District. The Cups District. Okay, got it. Okay. It's just oh. above. Oh, it's, us. Yeah, uh, it's, it's directly to the north. It's all the way to the north. Uh, you guys are in the banner hands currently. Mm, okay. I, I'm going to turn towards Koro and be like, or not Koro, I'm Koro. Oh my God. I was like, wait, what? You're to yourself? <laughs> Kanato, Kanato, Kanato. <laughs> yeah. I turn towards Kanato as I imagine um, that uh, Fenris is just like, just glaring at this, this entity. I turn towards Kanato kind of side and go, damn. Moment's respite for you, I think, is worth its weight in gold. At the very least, this offer, I, I, I have to take it. I, I'm not ready. A day? No. That is not enough time. Plus, who knows? Maybe it will be a welcome distraction. Yeah, it would be nice. You see, I press a hand on Kanata's shoulder, and I go, "Hey." I'm here if you ever need me, okay? Uh, maybe more now than before. <laughs> you see Lebusalek looks somewhat confused, uh, kind of then looking towards you, Kanato, through the metal mask. It, the, the need to investigate the Cups District is only needed to be done by you. I do not know why these others would concern themselves with this oh, issue. Oh, you're just, you're just... You're just like... No, someone else talk to him. Cousin, I say to this gentleman. Okay. Care and considerations are habits you may wish to pick up while you are here. I see. I am still new from Avernus. Apologies. But uh, I have a contract I can produce if needed. If you agree to this, I can at the very least delay it uh, a week. Anyone may or, attempt or to, two, or two. Uh, uh, any of you may give me a social roll to try and increase it. If you, I, I would like to roll a persuasion if you do not mind. Sure. Absolutely. Can I assist? Because he definitely said or two. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I'm down with that. So is this with the, are we this. doing with advantage then? Uh, we'll do with advantage. Yeah. All right. Cool. Uh, that's a 14. Is there anything you'd like to say to assist me? Oh yeah. Uh, I just, I, I distinctly remember, uh, an or two. Yep. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Okay, cool. So then that's a 14, and Fenris will say, At the very least, we will need some time to think over your offer. So if there's anything you can do in the interim to allow us that time, we would appreciate it. I am afraid the time is delicate, but if you do manage to handle this before the evening sun, I can work what uh, numbers I can to give you at the very least two weeks. Then but it must be done by this evening. Then I will not speak for my compatriots, but I will investigate it myself if I have to. You have my word. Is that good enough? As so long as it gets done. Count me in. This involves me too. I shall join as well. Fenris me as well. Over his Yep, there, okay, there it is. <laughs> you also, all of you know Ash knows the Cups District probably better than anyone. Then if we have nothing here, I believe that concludes our business. Not quite, uh, the contract. Uh, you see him kind of magically move his hands as a scroll produces a inkwell of blood, writing down pretty much the exact details of the contract, uh, and then moving it over magically in front of Kanato. 
Can I like look and, over the shoulder? Is this like a, a demon devil contract or is this like a fish? This capacity? is definitely a devil contract. Okay. Am that's I, not really I, that's not really the play in, in Cold Rock anymore, is it? Would I know that for my mom? Um, you know that it's not it's not uncommon. Most of the devils within Cold Rock do tend to handle the logistics as they are more lawful creatures in Fair comparison enough. to demons being more chaotic. Um that being said, uh there aren't Orcs tend to be the largest population here within Cold Rock, and most of the ones that live here aren't particularly good at clerical things, so they just make the devils do it. Yeah, and fair enough. So it it's always your character especially would know your mother being who your mother is. A the moment a contract is signed, they are bound to it, even if it serves against them. But always read the fine print. Yeah. I'm gonna look towards this guy and go. Basin, we're gonna need details on what this job is before we even consider signing this. Yes, as the contract states. Um, anyone can give me an intelligence save if they wish to try and identify any weird legal loopholes. Let's oh, go, boy. Team Stupid. Yeah, we're Team Stupid, <laughs> oh, no. but we're gonna be a real good Team I, Stupid. I, I didn't want to ruin the really sensitive scene with Gisselet, but I'm just like, man, you're a bad teacher. All of our scores <laughs> are shit, man. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> Here we go. <laughs> All of a saving throw, you said? Anyone uh, can make an intelligence saving throw to read the fine print. Got it. <laughs> oh, uh, perfect. Natural one. Natural one! High five, Bosco. <laughs> yep, let's go, Monty. We're 11. good. I the 11, so we have lots of ones in there. <laughs> Come on, <laughs> Ash like and Serena. Everyone. Between Ash or Serena, which one of you would like to gain the knowledge of what's on the paper? Uh, let's go, Ash. I don't think... <laughs> Really yeah, give it to Ash. Think so? I mean, you're I, the one I think it's. I think it's, you know it makes district. sense. Yeah, you know the cups, and you probably made uh, deals yeah, before. Yeah, okay, okay, that's fair. Uh, Serena, you keep thinking about like why the uh, why specifically or how specifically to get the the coffin that you sleep in out of the lower stairs in 24 <laughs> hours, and how difficult that might be, where you might put it, and that seems to be a bit more of a distraction in your mind. But for you, Ash. You did recall this morning hearing a massive explosion in the Cups District that caused a bit of a riot. Uh, there have been a few disturbances from the top end uh, or the northern part of the Cups District the last few days, but nothing immediately called your attention. That being said, where the fine print simply says uh, to investigate and, if possible, um, remove any, quote, undead disturbances from the Cup District... It seems to be in the area of where you heard that loud, exploding noise a few days ago. Uh, that being said, the contract doesn't seem to be uh, double binding or trying to manipulate. It simply says investigate, if possible, deal with the effects, return with your findings uh, to, it says, uh, the Sleepy Toad Tavern in uh, the Markets 3, and uh, you, the contract will be fulfilled. It will provide two weeks of time to find the payment of 800 platinum. Okay, uh, I will I will relay what I know about the going ons about the uh, you know the riots and the recent explosions and stuff to everyone else. Then, All right. you said the Sleepy Toad Tavern, Zan. The Sleepy Toad Tavern in uh, the Markets Three. Yeah, that's what I was. Canada will. Like sigh deeply and be like, oh, mm. Martin, it's been what, like a day since they passed, and I'm already making deals with devils. I, I, I kind of shoot, I kind of shoot Kanato like a look, and then I remember, like, yeah, it's probably not. As, cool. as you that. say that, you also notice uh, the tax collector and the two imps also kind of give Kanato a look. Fenris is just going to put a hand on Kanato's shoulder so that he has a little bit of comfort as he goes to sign this. Like, it's my first time. I never really done this kind of thing. It'll be alright. Sorry if I offended. This may be one of the shadows that Gizalette told you to reveal. You see Lubuzalek look towards you, Kanato. Offended? Oh, yeah, God. I don't... <laughs> <laughs> uh, you I'm... can easily tell your quote unquote cousin doesn't need to be affected by any of your guys' emotions. Okay. Can I have you... um, a word with you, Master Lavazulet? Uh, 
Sure. You should just stand there. <laughs> I'm going to give you something for free. Something that does not require a contract. A free transaction, as it were. That is rare. <laughs> it's more common than you think. I'm going to give you something called advice. Seems to just kind of... If you could see him blink, he would kind of be blinking blankly at you. Advice is wisdom from one person to another. Usually assisting in guidance to learn about the world around you. Which, and I mean this with no offense, which I don't think you even understand what that means. You seem to lack very much. If you are going to interact with the average person here, you may want to understand how people work. Give me an insight with advantage. Alright. Oh, one more. Oh, it was almost a natural 20. Oh, but come it's on. A 14. <laughs> Which 14 do you want? <laughs> uh, oh man, I'm so torn. The one on the top, I mean, it's got some, it's got some pizzazz, but the one on the bottom's got some gumption. I'm gonna go with pizzazz because that's a great word. It has Fair pizza enough. in it. Uh, as you're, as you're looking towards this figure, you notice that it seems to be easier to speak to them in Infernal than Abyssal. Um, mm. Almost, it's very faint. But you recall all of the stories that your mother said of the people who were from Avernus and how they acted, and this seems to be to a T. Every time they say something in Abyssal, the common tongue of Cold Rock, it's almost as though they're angry they have to speak it rather than speaking Infernal. That being said, you can tell that there are small breaks in the emotionless armor, as it were, that you seem to be kind of getting through making this figure a little nervous. Mm. It is okay to be new. But if you're going to do this kind of work, you're going to need to know how to talk to the people that you're working with. I... You're not dealing with our kind anymore. I think I understand. Good. Allow me to amend the contract. If you would. Uh oh. That's what wanna, you wanna, wish. Can, can we can we make sure that he's not doing anything weird with it? He moves over and illusorily puts a potential edit, if you would agree to it, to three weeks instead of two. Oh. Nothing else in the contract has changed, and you can tell. I point to it and I go, "Do you know what that is?" Uh, understanding. It is kindness. You see, it, its head kind of leans slightly to the left, confused. It will make sense in time, but it is a good habit to have. And I give them a, like a very like low nod, as if I'm kind of proud of them. I don't know. Do you sign? Yeah, yeah. As you sign the contract, it seems to dissipate into a bit of ash. The contract is sealed. I await your presence at the Sleepy Toad at the Three Markets. Did I have to use, like, blood or something, by the you way? You did not, no. Okay. <laughs> so, Serena, you did see the vial of blood, and we're like, hmm. <laughs> Interesting. You don't mind if I do. <laughs> Very quickly, as quickly as they arrive, they seem to slink into the shadows of the crowd of Cold Rock with the two larger imps that were kind of acting as the bodyguard. What would you guys like to do? Uh, I'd like to make sure that everybody's got their wits about them. Sorry, it's a completely different world to them. Clearly. Oh, I have wouldn't. some choice words that I managed to keep in. But not all of them. Poro, you. you know, part of your mother's job outside of being a potion maker is the occasional devils that get shunted into here who manage to find a way to escape their fiendish overlords tend to require a good bit of assistance and adjustment. Oh, yeah. I, I turn to Kanato and go, Hey, on their way to the Market 3, I could teach you some infernal insults. <laughs> I'm in. Okay, the first one... <laughs> 
is your mother looks like a celestial. <laughs> and I just start walking. Uh, oh dear. <laughs> I, I, I'm going to tap Ash on the shoulder. What's up? Uh, so you're more familiar with the Cups District than probably any of us. Uh, any ideas for how to approach? Do we just walk in normally? That's uh, usually what I would do, yeah. So act casual, my specialty. Perfect. Uh, Ash, again, you have a pretty good mm -hmm. idea as to where they're asking you to investigate. Um, it is a area that has had a, a, a bit of condensation and almost humidity kind of emanating from it. It's been kind of... It hasn't really provided a lot of food in the area, so you kind of avoided it, but you're pretty sure you can get there in about an hour to two hours' time. Okay, so we're currently headed somewhere else first, though, right? Um, you're very likely, well, specifically, uh, I suppose you, Fenris, would know that it'd probably take you about 30 minutes to, for all you to gather your gear if you're going to investigate. Mm -hmm. So do you all want to do that? I, yeah, I think that makes the most sense because we're going to want our stuff just in case something bad happens. If there was an explosion, I think we'd yeah, be Yeah, if stuff is blowing up, mm -hmm. we're going to want our gear. All right. Um, as you kind of all motion to walk together, kind of keeping a comforting hand and eye on Kanato, you finally leave the uh, the wake of Professor Gizhalet. You go gather your gear and investigate the Cups District. And for right now, that is where we're going to take our break. Hey! Oh. I was so I was looking through my character sheet and I was like, "Where is my sport ball? I have a sport ball. Where is it?" And then I found it. And I was like, "Yes, sport I, am, ball. I am ready. I'm prepared." Ne, 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 ne. Wow, Dude, this the, the the tone right out of the gate was like, "Holy crap!" <laughs> yep. <laughs> I tried to warn you. <laughs> Believe it. You did. You I'm did. all about that immediately, Zan. Yeah, immediately, <laughs> instantly. Welcome to welcome to this world. That's nothing new. Hi guys, welcome into the Bosco halftime show. Same halftime show, different channel. Uh, first of all, it's up. how nice! <laughs> yeah, <laughs> thank you to to all of the people who drop bits. I'm gonna try. I don't have full access to the Streamlabs stuff right now, which I could talk to Zan about after the stream. But I will call out everything that I can see. If I missed yours, just let me know. I'll make sure I get to call it out. But uh, Maximum Mog, thank you for the hundred bits. Uh, Ravan Ashbear, thank you for the hundred bits. Floor Eight Menace with the hundred bits. We've got Hyromir with the two hundred bits. <laughs> uh, Neko on Parade with 489 bits. And Prince Kitsune, thank you so much for the 1,000 bits. We really appreciate that. Uh, I'd also like to thank Hyromir for the 20 gift subs to the community. GTG Maximo, thank you for the 5 Tier 1 subs gifted to the community. The Citric King, thank you for the Tier 1 sub. And Floor 8 Menace, thank you for the 11 Tier 1 subs. And Dracon King with 1,000 bits. It's here! Holy shit, yeah, I'm noticing, like, all of my players and a massive chunk of the 10-person <laughs> campaign that was the initial part of the setting. Yep, they're here. I, I did I did peek, and I noticed some some individuals where, like, characters were mentioned. They were like, let's go! And I'm like, Let's go, yep. That must be uh, awesome. Bad Sam, I think for one of Zan's real-life players here. Welcome to the table, everybody. Yeah! <laughs> that is uh, that is Alex, the, the DM of our Pathfinder game on Sundays that Zan and oh, I play cool. in. Oh, cool. Yeah. I also very familiar with this world, having been in some of the long marathons that we've done. Uh, DTG Maximo was actually the ruler of uh, Hinan that we talked about in the intro. Uh, I think I saw one other person in here. Um, I think no, his name I was like Aeon, Aeon something or other. He played a uh, elf. Uh, uh, <laughs> Mark. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah, him. <laughs> yeah, Maximum was a hundred bits. I was a tree that started a fire. <laughs> also, Shadow, this is going to be a, a long form, not a one shot. Yeah. Mm, yep. It is. Yep. Dude, I'm so spoiled. I have two DD games that I'm in, and I'm like, oh my yep. god, this is this is. Yeah, amazing. NK draws and was redacted. And I get yeah, damn, your mother lets you have two. <laughs> what? Dogs. You get I two literally... parents. I get none. Yeah, I was gonna say, man, I love my dad <laughs> and my mom. Yeah, I don't have any either, so. <laughs> yeah, but you should die like yesterday. I can't wait to go home and be like, hey, mom, hey, dad, do you want four more kids? <laughs> yeah. Oh, I found Maximum's uh, bit drop. For some Angler's Ale TM, the only ale for what ails you. Oh, man. Uh, for those ale. who, are, who are, are versed in the Angler's Ale lore, Angler's Ale does come from this plane. It does. Also, Angler's Ale showed up in Ravenloft. 
And I'm nice. so happy. <laughs> it was <laughs> it was Angler's Ale Ravenloft edition. It was great. It was in the wine cellar. I'm so happy. Oh my god, let me drink some more water. Mmm, that's a good point. I should probably get in my water bottle, but I've been yep. drinking iced tea. I forgot to say, Do but it. my, my character is only like three foot, like two. I can't remember exactly, but they're like Aww, pretty short. your travel size. You fit into most overhead bins comfortably. <laughs> I'm actually playing a tall character. I'm, I'm seven foot six. Oh, I'm 211. I'm even smaller than I thought. My two, you're 211? <laughs> oh, good grief. Are you considered small? Yeah. Oh, 100%. Okay, got it. Just a little guy. Just a little you're pretty, close to, my, you're pretty close to my nose feet, size. I think. Dude, you're like work size. <laughs> or so my keyboard just turned off, and I don't know why. So I'm going to fix that. It's not allowed to type. Also, Prince Kitsune, thank you for the 100 bits. Imagine going to a funeral and the tax collector is just looming 10 feet away, just waiting there smiling. That was, yeah, that was so messed up. Because you know he was in the back waiting for everybody to clear out. He's like, uh, excuse me, sir. Okay, drink time. My condolences, here's your bill. Yep. Yeah, you're going to get kicked out of your house in 24 hours. Bye. Jesus. Well, three weeks now because Monty and I were like, I am diplomacy. Yeah. <laughs> I like how I was like, oh man, that really sucks. You better move. And then all of a sudden, Zan was Wait, like, Wait, my coffin? <laughs> He's like, You live there too? And I'm like, What? <laughs> no. No. Now it matters to me. But yeah, thank you to everybody who showed up. We really, we really appreciate it. This is, again, this is going to be session one of a, of a long running campaign. So we hope you guys will stick with us. It's been a blast so far. It's so weird to be back here. Uh, yeah, also, this the VODs will be uploaded to YouTube, so... Uh, I will make lion, not Tiger, Zan. Oh, I'm sorry, Tiger, or Lion, did I say Lion? Oh, in, in the chat. <laughs> I, 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 I said it right during the funeral. You did say it right, but yeah. you typed it wrong. I was like, wait, yeah. what? Okay, now I gotta go spell some things this correctly, because Zan... This is a, a Zan good time for a bathroom break, right? This Absolutely. is a very this good time for a bathroom break. Yeah, we're on break. break yeah. yeah. Yep. Get water, uh, go to the bathroom. I apologize. Uh, it does not get heavy again, so don't worry. We're ever. We're, we're... No, 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 I meant just the session. We're oh, okay. okay. I it's was like, oh, good. It's all heavier. smiles and sunshine. Hurt. Yeah, it's not gonna hurt. I'm not gonna hurt you guys more. Yeah. Dude, I spelled Monty's parents' names like so wrong. Like, <laughs> and... yeah. Welcome to Dragonborn names. <laughs> yeah. Awful. I was gonna say, by the way, I'd love it if we go to this place that exploded. It's like, welcome to the Emporium of Exploding Parental Figures. <laughs> oh God. <laughs> By the way, hey, I don't know. Hey, hey, the hey, hey, come to this game. I want to run for you. It's gonna make you real sad. It's gonna. <laughs> <laughs> GTG Maximo, thank you for the hundred bits. I've been sitting here getting nostalgia hard this whole time, dude. I feel you. I love that so many of us are in here. I've got we've got the double marks. We've got we've got the Michael. We've got Alex here. I think I saw Daniel. I'm here. Like this is crazy. Yes, Jordy, I agree. Um, I think uh, Ryan's also watching as well. Oh, is he? Hell yeah. Yep. Dude, the whole and, gang's uh, all here. Where's, where yeah. is Davos? That's uh, 4-8 Menace. <sighs> Unacceptable. Even Nick's <laughs> here. Yeah. This is gang's crazy. all here? Gang's all here. Nick's is here? No, they're, they're yeah. in Mad Nick's. Wait, Nick's a vampire? Oh, shh. What? Neko on parade, thank you for the hundred bits. Bosco, don't read this. Got it. Oh, shit. <laughs> he had one job. Yep, I won't read it. I don't even know who that is. Who are you? No, who are you? Don't forget me, Dorn Essex. Remember what you did in Mass Effect, Bosco? <laughs> Shut up. Damn it, Major. <laughs> Oh god, the, the picture of Major in uh, Kirby that you sent me was so good. Yeah, I actually made the the Mass Effect campaign that uh, NK draws uh, drew all the characters for is the uh, splash screen for my Twitch. I do remember. Remember what you did, Dorn, where you blew up the money. Remember that? How about we? How about we talk about what Dorn did? 
I mean, we're not the only stupid, stupid party that's done that. Before. Oh God, no! We didn't do it intentionally, but it was a really funny mistake. Good to know. Also, Monty, in case you're curious, um, give you one guess as to who uh, who Bosco played in that game. What? Oh, right, you're away. <laughs> <laughs> Lecta remembers. Oh God. Burnout Vaughn, thank you for the 100 bits. Uh, will these be up on YouTube later? I believe the plan is for Zan to throw them up on his YouTube channel, yes? Uh, not on mine personally, but uh, I will make announcements as to where to find it. Ah, perfect. Do you have a YouTube channel? Um, I do. I will make announcements as to where to find it soon. Lies. I gotta delete old content first. <laughs> you gotta, <laughs> I gotta pull stuff off of there. That could be I understand. I mean, I don't have, like, old content, but, like, if I did, I'd understand. It's like looking Dude, at I, a photo. can I post right? this picture in the chat? Cool Sasuke and Naruto AMVs. What? <laughs> or better yet, Zam, put that in the chat. Let them see it. <laughs> uh, I, I don't think I can, unfortunately. Oh. Don't worry. No sharing. How sad. Are you trying to share, like, the photo that's the Mass Effect one? Yeah. Mm -hmm. I think you can put link photos. Um, I just chat. thought you could copy the link and it'll show up. Yeah. Uh, Shame. <laughs> I've definitely I've definitely done it before where can they look at the Oh, yeah, wait. One? Let me see if they're all there. Let me see if that. Let's see. Yeah, that worked. Or maybe it's because I'm in there, but. Oh, yeah, you did it. Yep. That's Damn. what I always do. Just copy that. You you let random people post links in your chat. Damn. Yeah. Right. <laughs> yeah. I, I live dangerously. That's crazy. <laughs> Wild animal, baby. By the way, I need to. Uh, I need to make Zan, shaking I, mod because I know they will act with the fury of a thousand suns when needed. <laughs> Zan, you should you should give me a sword. <laughs> I will do. See, later. I'm only a VIP in Monty's chat. She doesn't give me all the power. Oh, we'll go oh, right damn. to your head. I'm, I. I <laughs> I just I just want to be able to edit stuff. That's the only reason. I'm not gonna be a little shit. I take oh, my swords sir. very seriously. I feel like you don't want to be bothered. You're not um, yeah, that's actually true. streaming D and D. You're streaming nothing. I don't know how you're not streaming anything. But you, you, your only tag is English, and you're not streaming anything. You don't have a game or like a theme. Wow, yeah, that's it does crazy. Just say streaming for viewers. Like there's no yeah. category for who. For you, For, apparently, you yeah. Possible. Normally, there's yeah. like a name, and then underneath what they're streaming, it's just blank. Well, that's it's an like exclusive. That, that's like that anime music video that has no title. It's just like, how did you yeah. become? <laughs> I'd be able to fix that if I had a sword, but I can't. So normally, Streamlabs gives me a pop up, but I think because I'm not logged into Zan's Twitch on Streamlabs, that's why it didn't give me the pop up. Uh, give me one mm. second. Let me jump in Twitch. I haven't been there. Yeah. In a minute. If you go to your dashboard, you can add Dungeons and Dragons as the category and then add a title. Make it official. Yep. <laughs> it's also just good because if people search for, like, what D&D stuff is happening on Monday, like, it pops up in the list. Right. Yeah. Lots of nerds out there, and they gotta get their Don't give Bosco a sword, he deletes my messages. I would never, Citric. Come on. Hmm. I appreciate I like the quality content that you bring to every stream, Citric. Also, I'm very sorry I come into this like, Cora's more quiet. Me talks a fuck time. Talks the whole time. Yeah, I was like, what are you talking about? <laughs> to well, be I mean, fair. There's just, things that your character would know. They are things that I'm also trying to like, you know, make it fun. Because, you know, first session jitters and I'm like, nah, baby. Oh, for sure. And you know yep. what? No matter how much you talk about what your character is like, you only truly flush it out once you actually start the camera oh, yeah. playing <laughs> yep you just start doing stuff you're like oh i guess they're this yeah mm -hmm. i guess that's how i act now this this is who i am that's how i do all of my characters i legitimately go into a campaign and i try to plan but i have zero idea of what i actually want and then when i actually start i'm like well this is who i am now now i that's want this where it's going for me posting in chat real quick bosco me also bosco sure. uh tell, tell him the uh, dice story because we did say we were gonna do that during the break Oh, <laughs> which dice story though? Um, I the only dice I have at my current place of residence, uh, because oh. the other dice I left behind, uh, are the sweet dragon dice or the the lies dice. dice, lies dice. Oh, 
get get your lies dies from Die Hard Dice. Not that we're sponsored, but, uh, but you should check them out. They're the cool time, anyway. The one time we played Pathfinder here, I was like, oh shit, these are the only dice I have here. And they were just rolling fucking 20s nonstop. It was like 20, 20, 20, 20, which is funny because when we played on Sunday, he was not using the lies dice and they were not rolling 20s. It was oh one, God. three, one, two, five. But then here's what I noticed. Every time we used hero points, we would always roll 20s. You and me both. We were like, ah, we ball. Fuck it. 20. Yep. Uh, I made you mod, it makes by the it way. more dramatic that yeah, way, Thank though. you. I think, I think the hottest dice I have are those rainbow dice. They always roll really hot. Sweet. Um, fortunately, the, the roll I had for the tax collector was pretty low. Mm-hmm. Uh, GTG Maxima with a hundred bits weight. Zan, you managed to roll over ten. Shut up. <laughs> Cease. Mark is here. You can throw it at him. Yeah, there you go. Oh, you I mean the man who them. rolled seven natural ones in a row at a table? Oh, that's another story. But anyways. You gotta set records, man. You gotta set records. Yeah. We, uh, we all here? We all ready to get back in? Hartsy? I think Hartsy's in the back. Here. Yeah, they're still yeah, here. I'm here. I'm here. I was just Oh, following. there you go. <laughs> and I was stuffing some food down real quick before. I'm we glad you clarified because I was going to say something awful. Thank you, sir. <laughs> Monty, you here? Yeah, I am. Evie, you here? Sure. Thank you. Uh, also, Shay, you here? Sorry, uh, Monty's good friend. Shay, you here? Okay. Fuck off! Come on, <laughs> man. <laughs> my title. You're the one that made it a thing. <laughs> I I say it because Shay is my good friend, okay? I'm not saying it. I'm saying it because Shay is very nice. But right? she is so much your good friend it. that you corrected me, and now it's a thing. Yeah. I'm the good friend Shay. Uh, Darcy's the goth friend. Um, Draco's just Durko. Bastard. Bastard. Yeah, bastard. Evil <laughs> we all got our nicknames. All right, uh... With that, I think we all got our our, our stretches and waters in. Uh, we're gonna get back into it. Let's do it. Also, I just want to point out, Goblin is sleeping and it's adorable. Oh, that's amazing. So, so, I so is my roommate's dog. Bed. Jordy's just out cold on the bed. Yo, Jordy. Jordy. All right. It is Whew. taking about two hours of time to fully collect your things and get further into the Cups District. Within Cold Rock itself, this tends to be the rougher part of town with many ramshackle buildings slowly stacked on top of each other. Um, anyone who would like to, um, please give me a history. Kanto, you'll have advantage on this. Ooh. Ooh. I mean, I'll do it, but I don't think I'll do good. Yeah, this is going to be a bad time. Oh, <laughs> Three! Oh, why did Jeez. I roll twice? Sorry. Uh, looks like Conato yeah. and no, no wonder I got homework as my parting gift. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Man, I'm having Conato one of them days. And Serena, you know, some 20 odd years ago, after uh, the Yellow was imprisoned forever, uh, there was a rather large power vacuum that still hasn't been fully addressed. But one of the people who tried to lay claim to this were a number of Githyanki, a alien race from beyond this realm who joined up with a number of demons specifically to try and overtake cold rock to date they are the closest invading force to almost do so however they were thwarted by admiral whitefang and portmaster kernesh amongst a number of other heroes that managed to keep uh, the free port of cold rock free for people that being said many of these demons found themselves stuck in cold rock and its adjacent areas and many of them produced offspring over those 20 years that have been allowed to stay here but unfortunately as most of cold rock doesn't trust them for their side siding with the githyanki during the invasion they are mostly relegated to the cups district and it's not really treated with much care as a result uh Ash, as far as you could tell, the demons don't really seem to bother you. You don't seem to bother them, and they tend to be kind of wasteful with food sometimes, which is to your benefit. Sure is. Nice. But food. As you continue to walk closer, uh, Ash kind of being your guide in this way, you manage to find uh, the area that Ash was somewhat suspect uh, that needs to be investigated. And as you come closer around these bends of 
ramshackle homes and beat up uh, abodes that are quite literally built into the walls uh, at times, you see what appears to be an odd stream of water floating uphill, slowly being pushed and gathered in strength. Is that a normal sight here? Ash, you are certain it does not. N no, I have no idea what that is. Perhaps worth investigating? Uh, as, Ash, you kind of look around the corner to where the stream is connected to, uh, you're fairly certain you're pretty close to the area that the, uh, the explosion sounded, and it seems to be that the stream is leading towards where you heard that eruption of noise. Something has sprung up backwards. <laughs> Leak. Ash, you hear uh, Remington uh, laugh out loud and squeak just a little bit. <laughs> Aw. Uh, for anyone listening, that that's uh, Draco. Whenever you hear that, it's actually, it's actually <laughs> Remington. I have bumped my sensitivity down so much, and it just it's doesn't so, matter. It, it's so minimal. It's, it's just, fine. Don't worry about yeah, it. It's, really it's minimal. To, Are they, they're they're, they're right behind you. It's going to be hard. To me, to me, it's like whenever we occasionally hear, uh, or are sorry, are graced by goblin. In the yes, oh <laughs> just God, a meow. Bastard. You know, cats, dragons, oh, same thing. She woke up. Thanks, Zan. God damn it. Oh, oh no. Look British. what you did. British. Mine woke up. British. <laughs> goblin. It's a goblin. In it. So, Moving, kind of looking he, around. The... Go ahead. Sorry, you said the stream is heading towards where I. He, the stream is floating uphill, which yeah doesn't seem in in the direction possible. towards where all the disturbances have been. Well, the the origin of the stream seems to be coming from that origin point, oh, okay. or at least near it. Okay. Uh, Ash, as you continue to kind of guide around the corner, you see a sizable cut of street, um, kind of slummed street of flagstone, broken in like a in what appears to be a fissure with a sizable now river floating again uphill. Around it, you see four cackler demons, all looking, Koro, to your eyes, to be particularly younger cacklers, small red demon things that seem to be wearing kind of beat up clothes and overalls, one with a straw hat, uh, as they hold, three of them hold on to the largest it seems to be holding a fishing pole as they seem to be shouting at each other to hold on for dear life as the pole and string seem to be somewhere in this upward floating stream. As far as you can tell, this is the only life you've seen down or in this area of the Cups District. Ben, that's just strong. Odd. <laughs> I am strong. It's great. Sorry. <clears throat> That was just me cackling like a bug so game. Sorry, I interrupted you, Shay. I'm so sorry. Oh, no, we just went at the same time. It's all good. I was, she was just going to say that as an odd sight. <laughs> I I have a good sense that Fenris and Serena are pretty, you know. Strong, yes. They're pretty strong. Rough. I'm going to put my hands on both of their backs and go, well, come on. Are we supposed to assist them with the fishing pole? Yeah. It's a deal. We might get information from them. You hear in Abyssal one of them, sh the one of the smaller ones, shout, "Come on, Dominic! You almost got him!" Are Come they, on, are guys! They like... Dominic's almost got him. Are they? <laughs> are they over. like kids? Uh, you can't really tell. The only one who seems to understand kind of their age would be Koro, unfortunately. Are they I, as I as I run towards the kids, I go, "What is up, fellow youth?" And <laughs> <Yeah>. I'm going <laughs> to. <laughs> Excellent. And I'm gonna, I'm gonna like gesture, like, come on. <laughs> like, Fenris so, will walk over. Yeah, Serena will walk over, kind of following, but more slowly. As you move over, uh, you kind of move to assist them, and unfortunately, as you arrive, the slight delay, whatever they have hooked, seems to slowly break itself from the uh, the fishing line and move downward the upward flowing river. Um, Anyone who may, please give me a perception if you roughly feel like you could see the this whole ordeal. All right. Hey, I rolled above a 10. That's a 13. Uh, 
Hanato, you <laughs> have actually read quite a few fishing manuals and, you know, strange uh, texts that talk about creatures around the realm, between realms. You identify this not as a simple fish that seems to have gotten away, but that of a slad tadpole. Ooh. Oh. Oh. Uh, you see the three of the uh, cacklers seem to chase down the the broken street towards this creature as one of them looks up with his straw hat kind of towards you. Ah, oh, thanks, strangers. Uh, sorry to bother you. Uh, no bother. Sorry we went a bit faster. You hear in kind of broken infernal. Uh, uh sorry, sir. I didn't, uh, I didn't mean to break any laws. Uh, I suck in my lips. Is there, are they breaking a law? Uh, you don't know. <laughs> <laughs> don't worry, you're not lawful stupid. You're good. What is my line? <laughs> <laughs> I do not think that you have broken any laws. None that I am aware of, anyways. Uh, you see the cackler kind of take off a straw hat, kind of hold it sheepishly in front of him. Uh, Name's, uh, Dolmic, ma'am. Uh, uh, me and my, my friends, we were just trying to get something to eat. Is that a common food in this area? Uh, not really, but food ain't exactly common in this area. I see. It, it, oh, I, that's... I, I think you are a bit lost, though. Uh, uh Banner Hands District is back behind you. Uh, uh, this is the Cuffs District. Eh? Ain't much to find here. Actually, I, I would disagree. We're um, investigating something. We heard that there was um, a commotion, perhaps, in the area. Would you happen to have heard, seen anything recently? You see the cackler's face light up. Oh, you mean the big bo- uh, uh, You mean the big boom? Uh, correct, yeah. Tis the rumor, yes. It, 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 it sometimes happened down here. Uh a bit more frequent than usual, I think. Uh, but yeah, it's just down the way, where the, where the river water's coming from. Bunch of strange fish been coming out of there for a few days now. Good eatings, though. You hear Speaking that, Hash? We might be able to get you some food. Speaking of... Hash smirks eating, a little bit. <laughs> I'm going to pull out uh, a ration in the form of a cookie. Can I also take a shot at this uh, fish thing. I thought you were right, going to take see... a shot at the kid. <laughs> <laughs> oh, can, I kill this child? can I shoot the um, child? Can I just take a shot? <laughs> Koro, uh, as you look, kind of look towards the cackler, because they're smaller sized creatures, uh, you can tell that Dalmic and his friends seem to be anywhere from about f the equivalent of human age, about 14 to 18 years old. Oh, they are youths. Dang. Ah, they are indeed. Uh, I... You can tell that they were born well after the invasion. I'm gonna do like a cool like, you know, uh Pirates of the Caribbean coin trick with the cookie in my hand, and I'm gonna go. Speaking of goods eats, could you take us to this location? You see his eyes light up at your uh practiced kind of martial art performance. Uh, uh, yes, sir, of course. <laughs> I, I I tossed them each a cookie. I took a ration off my inventory for it. Uh you hear a few of the other cacklers. Dolmic, come on! Uh, hold on, I gotta guide these strangers in. Uh, here, quick, follow me before we lo lose track of the, the little feller. I will follow behind him. And motion moving, for everyone to follow. Moving sure. further down to the Cups District, you see an even sorrow or state. What looks like long, burnt down and dilapidated buildings completely collapsed in on themselves. The occasional stray older demon, very likely a veteran of the invasion on the losing side, very poorly managing to find ways to live and eke out a meager existence here. But this doesn't seem to stop your guy Belmic from leading you down further to these broken and more broken and rubbled streets until finally, uh, Kanato, you look and notice that the fish is too far below water and the stream has become too heavy to effectively catch. They're unfortunately going to have to wait for it to surface again. Darn. If, if it does get close to the surface at any point, would I be able to take a shot to try and, like, 
I don't know, like fish catch it. it. <laughs> yeah, Kinda. if you see it, but you reading a lot of uh, manuals about fishing and, and such, you you know sometimes if a if fish is spooked, it's going to be a little while before they come out, so they're just mm -hmm. going to be patient. But you don't think that these kids seem to know that. As Dalmic looks around at the path, um, he kind of points over towards a broken and rubbled few buildings that used to be probably a few stories high, but now unfortunately seem to be more, little more than rubble debris piles themselves. There, boom piles over there where the river starts in. Uh, me and me and my friends don't dare go that way. Uh, it's a little too, uh, well, the fish tend to be a bit more strong than, well, the, those fellers that don't breathe, they smell like they're already dead. Uh, sometimes they, they wander around them parts as well. Mm. Mm. Uh, sorry, I can't be more more help to you. No, I've been uh, very much a fantastic help. Right, yeah. everyone? Onward yeah, uh, and upward. I wish you all the best of luck. Uh, I guess we'll keep trying to get this little feller. It, if you need any help, just just give old Dominic a, a holler. As and you guys see the area itself, I will move you to the map. A map? <gasps> map! Map pack. Map pack. Map pack. <gasps> map pack! All of you see a rather large, uh, at this point, river breaking through the stone rubbled streets. Uh, just to your north is a massive pile of rubble and debris that kind of haphazardly falls into a broken building. But this river that seems to be floating upward as you've been descending further and further down through the Cups District seems to pull around a large building that has been broken in. You also see the river continue to moving, continue to move down uh, through the opening in the building that you can see to the kind of the northeast-ish from your position. That being said, um, Serena, please give me a survival. Oh. Uh oh. You're good at that, right? <laughs> I accidentally closed my character sheet. Let me bring it over. <laughs> oh, great. What are you, Monty? Oh, shut up, Bosco. <laughs> oh, no. Six. You know, it's funny. I think that's the only roll that I did today where, where I actually had a positive, and I think I, that was the worst I rolled. <laughs> I am so sorry. Um, you actually have advantage to this. Oh, oh okay. you have a chance. Eleven. Oh. Okay. Maybe. You kind of smell around the air. Um, you're used to smelling kind of lively things in in uh, alive things that kind of smell smelly, to be honest, uh, within cold rock. But the stench of undeath is easier for you to deduce than many other people who would might leave just kind of dismiss it as something that has died. You are certain that around some pieces of debris that undeath does lurk here, the smell and stench seems to be far higher in the area that the river is stemming from. As for the exact number or exact placement, you aren't certain with that role, unfortunately. I smell undead. In the direction of this river. You're sure? I am very sure. Well, I suppose be on your guard then. Uh, having heard undead, Fenris is going to start going first. Okay. And I will continue to walk. Uh, as you go there, um, Kanato, your passive perception kind of leads you to listen in, kind of being lower on the ground from everyone else, and you hear the water here is far more rapidly moving than what you had already experienced above. Something real weird going on with this water, guys. Yes, yes it is. As you all move forward, 
uh, mm -hmm. Fenris, you also see above the massive enchantment or sigil that looks like a sun uh, kind of crudely painted in 2D, uh, two dimensions on the dome-like ceiling of cold rock. Uh, it still also covers here in the cold district, and it seems to be getting a little later. Got it. Give me an indication you're not going to have much light here for too much longer. Got it. Whatever we do, we should do it quickly. Uh, lest we want to roam around in the dark. We are in a time limit as well. Surprisingly, I do better in the dark. That, that does not I surprise me at all. Did you not uh, hear the sarcasm in my voice? What? It sounded like your voice. <laughs> I, I don't follow. We need to work on your inflections. They're a little hard to pick up. Ash is trying to stifle a chuckle. Uh, as we get here, can I roll a perception check just to see if anything's changed? You absolutely may. All right. 15. That's what I'm talking about, Fen. Woo. 15. One second. Also, Cora, I'm, I'm sticking pretty close to you. I like, got just... you. I got you, bro. <laughs> I got you, brah. Fenris, you definitely hear what sounds like water um, almost jutting, jutting, you would assume to be downward like a waterfall, but instead you're hearing it go upward, splashing against the ceiling before falling onto the ground and pouring upward in these rivers. You also see on the other end a river going the opposite direction, still upward some other direction. But with 15, you also hear what sounds like slight shifting of debris and echoes from uh, the mouth of this broken building. Do they sound like actual voices or just like whispers? It, no, it more sounds like debris or water kind of being unsettled by the stream of water. Hmm. Also, uh, Bosco, if you could uh, wall fly for us. <laughs> hey, oh, that's mine. <laughs> Come up with your own. Uh, I'm not cool enough to have a Bosco wall fly cam. or an overlord. <laughs> Bosco cam, exactly. Uh, I'll move it down a little bit. I'm just trying to see how the stream sees it. So many monitors. All right. That should do it. Uh, cool. But I don't sense anything like an actual presence, just the whispers. Correct. All right. Then I'm oh, not whispers. You're hearing like debris moving. You don't hear oh, any voices or anything. Got it. Then I'm going to keep moving. All right. Uh, what anything? kind of vision? What kind of visions do you have? Uh, I have, I believe, dark vision out to 120 feet. Dark vision. Snap. Correct. Same. Uh, dark vision up to 120 feet. Dark vision right. is 60 feet, but it's, you 60. know, it's, yeah, it's, yeah, 60 feet, gang. Let's go, drag, drag. Yeah, let's go. Oh, sorry, we don't got dark vision. Let's go. <laughs> <laughs> uh, can I get a ruler for him, uh, whoever's looking into the the opening in the building? Yes, I sure can. Uh, where do you want it from? My character's position from you. Yeah. too. Uh, sorry, other direction. The other direction you can't really see into the broken the app door. Yeah, there you go. So, one hundred and twenty. So, if you want, you want the full one twenty. Yep. Yep. All right. Question for the DM: Should I be drawing these maps? That is entirely <laughs> up to you. I don't think it'll be nearly as relevant. <laughs> I do hate that you had to ask that because I know you would. <laughs> I would. <laughs> you see a river continually etching downward through a broken uh, opening in the wall. A cliff going downward followed by a separate cliff going downward each about five feet. Not too difficult to uh, surpass. However, you do see what looks like two upside down waterfalls streaming into the two rivers that you now stand next to with the water continually stemming upwards in defiance of gravity, showing up further downward. Well, watch your step, I suppose. I confess I do not do well with water. Uh, I'm going to attempt, above, I'm going to attempt to step down. Oh, good. Shay, how, how tall is your character? Uh, seven foot six. Jesus Christ! No piggybacks for you. Forget it. <laughs> uh, do you need to check to go down five feet, or is it just easy to do if I take my time? 
Uh, it's easy to do if you take your time, but as you look over specifically, Serena, you see where uh, Fenris is moving downward. The water is actually on the ceiling. So, strangely enough, you feel comfortable going underneath water, not above it. Oh, good to know. I was, I was wondering if that was going to play a factor. That's good to yeah, know, yeah. indeed. I've lost my piggybacks in the future, though. How sad. That's true. Yeah, no longer, fair, you're no longer you... Nyx-sized. <laughs> I <you> know. Have... <laughs> Would you have dignified <laughs> that with a response at all? I'm sorry, what were you asking? No, I was asking if they would actually want to piggyback. Oh, I see. <laughs> uh, she probably wouldn't have taken a piggyback unless there was no option. Yeah. As you move uh, to here, everyone please okay. give me perceptions. I was just going to ask. Is this hearing based? Uh, this is. That's a natural one. I'm killing it. <laughs> it's so weird going from a character that has like a plus nine in perception to one that All of a sudden you're like, plus nothing. one, plus nothing. It's like no proficiency. Oh, oh Kanato. Hey, Kanato. all right, Kanato. Kanato what are you here? Kanato is oh! out here. <laughs> all yep, of you, use. all of you here shifting from the debris itself Breaking from the walls of broken down rubble seems to be mindless and shambling undead that you seem to have disturbed from their slumber. Um, while all of you see this, oops. Uh, oh boy. While all of you see this, uh, let's see. Doo -doo -doo. Who got Serena as well as Kanato are actually going to get advantage as we roll initiative. Hey. Uh oh, uh oh. It's showtime, boys and girls. Oh, that was almost a natural one, but I got 23. Ooh. Hey! Kanato with the net oh. 20, baby! Oh, oh, Ash. oh Ash, no! That's dude, we one. rolled like gangbusters. Look at that. Except for Ash, dude. Oh. Ash is over here, like, I want to get some food. I wonder if there's any food. Yeah, Ash is hungry. Yeah. Ash is a big yeah. You heard the growling and you just thought it was your stomach and you're like, oh, <laughs> <laughs> oh man. It was Fenris, right, Bosco? Uh Fenris, correct. Fenris. Yes. I have all the names if you want them easy to write down. Yes. You can I also did, cheat and look at the stream. It. What? Somebody else is taking notes? Yeah, I'm I've been Jay. taking notes! I've been Jay. Oh, you. I know I dungeon master for you all the time, but I take notes when I play, dude. Come on. Uh, all know. of us are I, taking I, I notes. See notebooks. I see all the notebooks, I know. <laughs> I, I have a digital notebook. Does that count? Can I count? You know my count? nightmare. How dare you? <laughs> I feel so overlooked right now. I'm so glad. <laughs> <laughs> It's okay, I'm sure your notes are great, Bosco. They are not yours, and thus I must All right. be better. First <laughs> on the initiative would be Kanato. Let's go. Uh, by the way, Kanato, Kanato no shield. Don't you dare. <laughs> <laughs> so immediately, um, seeing these creatures stumble out, one behind uh, Fenris, Kanato is going to call out, Behind you! And just like immediately take a shot towards that one. Okay. Snap. Uh, do you mind pinging the one you're shooting at? It won't ping. Uh, this one? Yes. Okay. Yeah. You guys got to click and hold. Uh, I did that. 15 okay. to hit is, in fact, a hit. Nice. For eight piercing. Eight piercing. Uh, okay. It is, unfortunately, still up. I'm gonna then uh, hide behind uh, my good friend here. <laughs> no. uh, next me. on the next on the initiative is Cora. All right. Immediately, I notice the um, uh, Kanado firing his shot, and I have a dark vision. And I'm immediately like, "Okay!" And I crack my knuckles, and I'm going to blitz over with my fast speed over mm -hmm. here. And as I run here, do I notice this one up ahead as well? Yes. 
I will also yell down, in front of you too! And I'm going to uh, go for an unarmed strike against this creature. All right. Punch it in the face. Monty Clue, yeah. punching oh, into nine. melee. Damn it! Nine? Nine. Is a hit against the zombie. Oh, hell yeah. Thank God. Well, <laughs> they are all HP, no AC. <laughs> That is fair. Uh, they take five bludgeoning damage. Five bludgeoning? Okay. And uh, with my bonus action, I can make a, a an unarm strike as well as a bonus action. Ooh, Ooh ah. Fancy. Oh. Oh, that's that one might miss, actually. No. Um, to, to, to pull the bail a little bit, uh, their dexterity is six, so their AC, starting AC is eight. So oh you actually Lord, hit. Oh, I actually hit. Yes. Yep. Love My dad would be yep. so upset with this form. Hey, another five. <laughs> it's how not about how you do it, it's just that you do it. I punch once and uh, kind of expect resistance, but break the rib cage, and I kind of flip around and go, ooh. But as it, like, my hand is stuck inside of its rib cage, and this thing is, like, reaching out towards me, I just pull my fist back in and, like, kind of grab the back of its body and then just headbutt its head off and drop the body to the ground. All right. Oh, man. Oh, I got some on my nose. It does not pass its zombie check to stay alive. However, if you could give me a D5 roll. Mm. Uh oh, SpaghettiOs. Five. Oh my word. Did that work? Three. Yes. You see, oh. well, the rest of the undead body seems to shamble into pieces, popping off from its body like stitch work. You see, its hand seem to reanimate and plop right next to you ah! in an aggressive <laughs> posture. Oh. My goodness. Okay. All right. Uh, uh, that that's... ends my turn, me thinks. Serena, you also see all of this. Awesome. <laughs> <laughs> and murder. Murder. I got to play a completely different style than what I'm used to. I know. So what do you normally play? I play a rogue. Oh, a well, <laughs> welcome to the front lines. I know, right? Uh, Welcome to being a barbarian. It's awesome. <laughs> ba -ba barbarian. She just kind of speed walks up to this undead. And Yo, she looks power at it, walk. Like, yeah, exactly. The power walk. And she looks down at it and she's like, trust me, it is better to stay dead. And she's going to attempt to. Ooh, that's Holy shit. Yeah, oh! Yeah. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> Shay, I'm going to need you to save a little bit of it. Just a little. Seven <laughs> slashing, unfortunately, does not bring it down. Totally okay. Uh, is She's that your making... whole turn? Mm. Yeah, I don't think she's going to rage yet. Right, this is level one chat, okay. so there, there's not much they can do yet. Uh, it is now Fenris' turn. Let's go! It's the best boy. Uh, I'd like to go help my compatriot. Uh, so Which I'm going to ignore this hand because they have it under control. Um, all right. It does provoke an attack of opportunity. Cool. Um, does a 14 hit you? It does not. All right. As it tries to claw at your leg as you move past it, it, it does not seem to get past your armor. All right. Uh, then uh, you will watch all the folks in the back as... From off of his back, almost off of his armor, he will pull out a very large glaive and he will twirl it uh, a little bit before bringing it down to crush onto the zombie in front of his friend. Let's see what happens. Well, I, thank goodness the 10 hits. I appreciate that. Hit. Yep. Uh, for five damage. Five damage, it is still unfortunately up. That is fine. Uh, he will then twirl it one more time and he will turn his attention to the other three and he will simply use one of his hands to uh, very the rock just bring it. All right. Yep. And that next will be on turned. the initiative is the undead, uh, not including Serena. Exempt. <laughs> Exempt. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> like a little asterisk next to their name. All right. Uh, we are going to start off with an attack on Koro. A small climbing hand attempts to slash at your leg. Mm -hmm. Does a 14 hit? Uh, 14 does not hit. As it leaps up to me, I do like a knee up and kind of launch it into the air so it doesn't hit me. Okay. Like a soccer ball. 
uh, the one in front of uh, you, Serena, is going to attempt to move away from the water. Uh, we'll have to make an agility, or sorry, a dexterity to not fall in the upstreaming, mo fast moving water. Does manage to succeed somehow. And we'll attempt to swing towards you. That is a 15 to hit you, Serena. Does not hit. All right. Uh, this one's going to move up. One, two, three, four. Uh, that will provoke. Yes, it will. All right. Um, how would you like to describe your its provocation? Uh, as the zombies begin to approach, uh, he will feign like he is about to cut with the front end of his glaive and twirl it a, just a little bit more to hit them with the, the butt of it, as I will use Polearm Master. Uh, which one did you and want to swing at? Because three would have entered. I will, which uh, the first one that to come to me would have procked it, so whoever the first one was. Got it. I think the north one was. Yeah, uh, yeah. yeah so then that one. Okay, cool. Here we go. Let's hit him in the face. Yeah. That should hit. It's going to yep. be a D4. That's one point of damage. Oh. All right. There's, it's there's still damage. damage. Damage has happened. Okay. <laughs> it right. looked cooler than it actually effectively did anything, but I'll take it. Uh, two swings are going to come out towards you, Fenris. Ow. The highest of which is 15. That will miss. All right. As both swings flail against you and do not seem to connect. Uh, if I he could will get... Then... He will then swing back across to just kind of block the hands out of the way with the glaive. Okay. If I could quit quick perceptions from both um, Serena as well as Fenris. Copy that. That's going to be a 21. Oh, anyway. Uh, you, uh, Serena, you're kind of stuck in this, this bloodlust. Usually when you hit stuff in practice, they go down, and this didn't go down. Uh, <laughs> that being said... Fenris, you hear what sounds like shambling and moving coming from around the corner to the south. Uh-oh. Uh, may I speak upon hearing this, or should I wait for my turn? Yeah, go ahead. Um, there may be more of them around the corner. All right, and with that, it is Ash's turn. <clears throat> All right. Um, I can I can see everything that's going on up, up over here with my dark, dark vision, right? Yep. Mm -hmm. And... I cast shape water on the like the little river to kind of like put water on the ground around. Oh, I can't. Is my ping working? Yeah, it is. Yeah, yes. it is. Sure. To, to put like water on the ground there and ease it, can I create difficult terrain. Oh, uh, sure. Yeah, yeah. I'll give it to you. Uh, can you post okay. the spell card for this, me? I love your players. That's um, cool. <laughs> water really bending. Cool. I, I like love that. it. Shape water. Goblin. Look <laughs> honey. Uh, range, I yeah, love it, 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 it is 30 feet, yeah. so oh, you have 30 to step feet. up. Okay. You'd yeah, have to move up. Like, right? That doesn't count. That is not an action, yeah, so you can move up. Yeah. Yeah, I can. I'll move up to... I was going to say, if you move up so, about yeah. four... Yeah, that works. Um. All right. Uh, so you're going to move kind of water from the ground and uh, kind of throw it onto the ground in front of these guys? Or on yeah. the, in, uh, underneath them? Yeah. As it, as you move the water and you move to kind of freeze it, you notice it snaps free. It snap freezes. It's so the water's extremely hot. Oh, but I will say that they are in difficult terrain. Uh, it doesn't do anything to them necessarily until they move. Um, all right. Uh, is it the end of your turn? I imagine you don't have a bonus action you can do quite yet. Right. Yeah. Um, all right. Top of the turn. It is Kanato. I will step down, seeing the the little one. And be like, uh, do you need a hand, or should I go for the group? <laughs> I'm like playing hacky sack with this thing, and I go, <laughs> uh, I think I got this. Yes. Yeah, you do have a hand. All right, I'll go for this one. <laughs> you fucking little shit. <laughs> <laughs> if you weren't so cute, I would throw you into the water. <laughs> Listen, he just wants to punch up. <laughs> 11 hits. Hey! It. Yep. Yay. Let's go. For seven. Uh, seven to hit. Uh, or seven yeah, damage, rather. Damage, yeah. Um, okay, it's unfortunately still up. Uh, I'm going to activate the uh, thing on my bow. And take All a right. second shot. Do you want to describe what that looks like? Uh, as this has two strings... Um, I'm able to quickly get a, a second one on as I 
draw the arrows and fire the second just after the first. Doesn't seem to have quite as much power, but we'll see if it hits. That's it? Just about. For one! <laughs> <laughs> uh, let's see. Actually, that does do it. Give me a second. Let me get the zombie roll. Um, a zombie roll also fails, so it seems to fell the target. How would you like to bring this one down? Uh, this, the second shot just happens to nick, like, the, the little strand that was keeping its head on and just, like, cuts that bit clean off. It's, like, totally meant to do that. Uh, please give me a d5 roll. Okay. Oh. Well. So you five. Have Huge. Uh, as it explodes out, you notice that its limbs try to pop off to continue their assault on Fenris, but they seem to be frozen and snapped in place by Ash's spell. Hey, good stuff. Nice. Ash. Do not get the effect off. All right. Uh, Connor, uh, is that your turn? I've got a little bit of movement left. I'll step forward one more. Okay. Koro. All right. Uh, I'm hacky sacking this hand, and I'm going to like launch it into the air and try and like just roundhouse kick it into the wall. Okay. <laughs> oh, pretty good. 18. Hey, there it is. Eighteen is a hit. Uh, you can't. You can tell um, that the the hand is harder to hit than the whole zombie, but you crush the AC still. Uh, for six bludgeoning damage. As you kick the hand into the wall, it seems to. Uh, fall lifelessly or unlifelessly to the ground. It doesn't seem to be moving anymore. All Ooh. right. Nice. I will go right here because then I'll have flanking. Unfortunately, I... that will be difficult to rain if you. Oh, that's right, because the eyes. Yeah. <laughs> Five, ten, fifteen, twenty. Wait, I'm, I'm. Oh, I don't have it yet. <laughs> You're like, wait, I can do the. Oh. Can I stand here without any repercussions? Uh, if you give me an acrobatics or athletics of your choice. I would like to choose acrobatics, please. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I would like to be the graceful. Uh, that is graceful. Choose? That is, that is, yeah, easily, easily done. Um, how would you like to describe you artfully landing on top of the broken zombie? I, uh, like, actually slide into place. I might even like skate in on the body and then like kind of kick the body aside as I oh, yeah. position <laughs> Oh, here. that's great. And then I leap off backwards and I'm going to use my bonus action to do another unarmed strike on uh, hmm, on this guy here. Okay. Bonus action. Bonus action. Ooh, punch it again. Yeah. Uh, for an additional six. Six damage. Um, okay, unfortunately that one is fresh, but you do manage to get a good damage into it. All right, that ends my turn. Serena. Whoa. Um, this is the guy I hit before. Has this guy taken any damage? Um, let's see. Uh, which one? The middle one? Yeah, the middle one. The middle one just got kicked by Koro. Okay, yeah. I think I'll just go for the one in front of me. I'll just try to finish it off. Do my best. For five slashing. Uh, five slashing. Let's see. Da, da, da. Um. Okay, that one is unfortunately still up, but you do manage to cut through. It looks like it's, it's barely managing to keep everything together. This is a heftier one. You are disgracing yourself. Please, just stay down. Uh, okay. Uh, that is Serena's turn. It's Fenris. Nice. I am going to continue the assault on this one that has now been kicked and sliced. Uh, 18 for 10 damage. Huge. Woo. Uh, Let's how go. would you like to bring this one low? Uh, <laughs> As they tell this thing to stay down, I would like to cut the legs out from under it, and as it hits the ground, just put the glaive through its head and then pull it out. All right. Um, unfortunately, as you cut through it, it seems that it's it's half of both half of the body still attempt to stay animated and swing at you. No, narratively. Yeah. Yeah, Made its funny still... zombie roll. 
Gosh darn it. Um, well, that'll be my turn. Uh, okay. That is now the enemies. Uh, this one will attempt to swing back at you, Fenris, even though it's only half a zombie. Hey. Um, that is a natural one. We'll check the severity. Oh, boy. Uh, He's, like, bisected. It makes both sense. You, uh, both, or all three of you in the front line do get, uh, you can use your reaction if you want to get an attack opportunity as it kind of shambles awkwardly in front of you, giving itself ample opportunity to swing at it. I will wait to see if it goes down. Serena, are you going to take that? Yep. Uh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> All right, uh, give me a yeah, give me a D5. Oh, oh, oh. oh D5, yeah. <laughs> uh, sorry, I can do a D5 by just going slash roll. Roll, roll, uh, slash one roll D5, D5, yeah. yeah. You want to put a space between the one D five as well the, between yep. roll. Yeah. Hey. A to who? A to who? As you see, its uh, foot still seem to be animated. Unfortunately, however, I will say because it's ah. the same creature, it still provokes. Or it's from the other two, can still use the uh, the potential provoke if you want. Go ahead, Monty. Uh... Hmm. Yeah, I'll I'll use a an arm strike against it. Punch it in the face. Stop. It has no it. face. Oh, it has a natural twenty. <laughs> oh, that... <laughs> I'm pretty sure minimum damage will kill it, but unroll damage for shiggles. Roll it for Oh, oh my <laughs> lord. <laughs> Just to bring um, uh as the foot splits off, I literally like football kick that thing into space. Channel sport ball. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I channel sport ball and I, I do a touchdown. Goal! Uh, this one will attempt to move up towards you, uh, which does provoke from you, Fenris. I will take that slice now, you jerk! 21! <laughs> For seven. As with your pole arm, you slash out doing damage to the creature, but it is still up. It will attempt to swing at you, Koro. Uh, okay. For a total of 16. That misses. Okay, as the one in front of you, uh, Serena, will swing. Oh, I'm so sorry. That is a natural 20. <gasps> oh, 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 no. Ow. Um, okay, and that is total of nine slashing damage. Oh, no. Ow. Ow. Sorry, eight slashing damage. Yeah, but... Eight slashing damage? Eight slashing damage. level one. Ow. Yep. As you hear what sounds like groans further around the corner. Oh, great. Uh, one second. As you barely make out the images of one of them shambling towards the, uh, of the seemingly disturbance of the undead. And that is enemies. It is now Ash. If I were to use any ranged things here, am I at a disadvantage because of my allies all being in the way and not tiny like Eevee? Um, you, they unfortunately do have cover just because uh, they are mm -hmm. taller, uh, especially Serena. <laughs> so cover works, uh, I don't know if you know, uh, they'll have like probably a plus two to their AC, so you'd have to mm -hmm. beat like a 10 to hit them. Unle probably. Unless you were to move around so that you had an angle where you didn't see us. It's so like if you got between, or rather behind myself and Koro, you might have a shot at one of them with no cover. Mm -hmm. If I if I move there, do I have a shot here? Yeah, absolutely. Okay. Do that. Take a couple steps, and then I will cast my Ray of Frost. Ooh, the spicy. Yeah. Holy oh, shit! Oh, oh, we are critting. <laughs> we out here critting. Sorry, go. I've got my back against the crits with other crits. I did uh, that correctly, right? Yes, you yep. did. And okay. with the additional damage Serena already did to this one, uh, how would you like to bring this one down? And what does your spell look like? 
Um, upon seeing one of these things sort of up close, finally, closer than I had before, I'm kind of, Ash is just kind of like, um, you know, puts out their hand and is kind of just like, ugh, stop that. You know, like, ew. <laughs> and just like, <laughs> just boom. Ray of frost. <laughs> Gross. And I uh, as, as you throw the spell out, please give me a d5. One. As you see, a hand uh, pop off the thing and in on top of the body of the creature that was just slain by the spell. I mean, put it in front. Ew. <laughs> it Ugh. is Ugh. now Kanato's turn. Uh, I'm gonna like kind of sneak forward a little bit and just try and sneak a shot through the legs of, of the 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 standing hand. Sure. I'm good enough to not hit you, right? We're gonna find out, aren't we? See. Yeah. Woo. Oh hell yeah! That's it. Five damage to the hand. Uh, how would you like to destroy the severed hand? Immediately as it, like, goes to, I don't know, whatever it goes to do, like, leap up or whatever, I, I pin it to the floor. Okay. Uh, is that your turn? Uh, let's take a little step forward. Like, do we, how many more are there? I can't see. Uh, there's two. Okay. <laughs> All right. <laughs> and it is Coral's turn. Is this soon going to be one, though? I am going to... Hey, <laughs> same verse, same as the first. Ten. Ten's a hit. Oh my god, seven bludgeoning damage. Good damage. Um, it is unfortunately still up even with the multiple hits it's taken. Alright. I go for, like, an arm breaker, but then just rip off the whole arm, and then, like, kind of flip <laughs> the arm around. And then I'm just going to use it as, like, a baseball bat. Okay. <laughs> I am so happy that you just have random wrestling things in your vernacular now. Nine. This is great. <laughs> That's it? <laughs> so, another seven. Oh, just barely fails at zombie save. Please give me a d5. All right. I have a cat in my lap. This is going to be so hard to do. Hey, we have the same handicap. Slash roll. Oh, God. Goblin, I'm so sorry. It's when... never a handicap. It's always a boon. <laughs> Yeah. yeah. There we go. Uh, oh, honey, I'm sorry. Uh -oh. Ooh, okay. Enjoy. Another foot. Another foot? The Everybody hand is a foot. Everybody gone loose, foot loose. Kick on their Sunday shoes. Uh, it is still on the typical terrain with the ice. Um, so that was one action, right? Uh, oh, no, that was two. That was two. My eight. bonus action, yeah. yeah. I am going to just position a little better. I'm going to move over here. All right. I will say, using the the dead zombie's body is kind of like a it makeshift skateboard over the ice. You're very you're very easily and artfully move around without any issue. Right, right. Down in the bed. Next up is Serena. Um. Well, first, you'll notice as the scratch that she received slowly starts to kind of knit back and close. Nope, don't like her that. her wound regenerates. Nope, <laughs> nope, nope. What? <laughs> Just kill your cousins. Um, <laughs> I am in no way related to these. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I don't... Uh... I failed my perception check. I... I know you said there were more coming, but... No, no, you do see them with your dark vision. It's just the perception check was to get the advantage on the... Okay. Um, how much of this area is difficult terrain right now? Uh, these kind of six squares. Okay. So, 10, 20, 25. Uh, she would only really get there. She would prompt an attack of opportunity from the foot. Um... <laughs> is it worth it? Is it worth it? I mean, I could just stay and attack the foot. <laughs> now, if you want to move there, that's fine. Uh, just need a athletics or agility of choice. Okay. 
12. Athletics. Yeah, that is enough to get past the movement using most of the bodies, again, similar to how Koro did to kind of ease your passing through. You managed to very easily clear the difficult terrain. Okay. And she's going to shoot a javelin. Ooh. You have a javelin gun? Yeah, it's oh, a ballista. Yeah. Nice. Pocket ballista. Don't you have one? Exactly. Pocket ballista. Yeah, no, we didn't all get those. those? No. Yeah, right. Dude, I only get one sit-down gun, and it's not this campaign. <laughs> uh, for four damage, uh, do good damage. Unfortunately, it is still up. However, as you look past the creature, one second, you see a huge crater oh. that seems oh. to be a massive dome on the other side of. This shambling undead is trying to move towards you. And as you look towards the center of the crater, you see a stone almost naturally formed dais at its center uh, with what appears to be a strange black or uh, onyx looking protrusion from the center of the dais. You also see an upside down lake uh, on the ceiling of the place pouring water uh, from the domed crater onto the uh, pathway itself. A stone dais with a protrusion in the center. Uh, aside from that, Sorry. is that your turn? <sighs> yeah, I think that's my turn. All right. Uh, next up we have is Fenris. All right. Uh, let me know if I can cut this corner. So I'm going to go one, two, three, four, five, and then six. Yeah, I'll allow it. Um, the right. water is going to make it kind of difficult so you will have to make a um acrobatics in that case to kind of be able to artfully move around it will you let me make athletics instead or is it acrobatics unfortunately this would be acrobatics um it'd be athletics just how does the natural one do uh <laughs> unfortunately you fall flat on the ice here cool already an attack when it gets near me all right hey uh, this stuff is do, 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 do. enemies. This one is going to move up. Um, give me a quick uh, another. Give me another acrobatics real quick to see if you're prone. Uh, twelve. You still stand. You just kind of get. You, uh, you, you get. You, it's like when you're walking on a hockey rink and you kind of you catch yourself shuffle around. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but this one does move up. It does provoke from you as it moves up. I will take it. That's a thirteen for eight damage. 13 for 8 damage. Good damage. Uh, with nice. the javelin, it stills, unfortunately, barely up. Ugh. Uh, as that it will attempt to turn. swing towards Serena. That is a 16 to hit. Matches. Matches? Okay. Yeah. That oh. is, oof, 5 damage slashing. Ow. Rude. Um, let me see. Doo -doo -doo. As both of you see something move incredibly fast towards your position uh both i should say serena and fenris as mm -hmm. you see floating or flying uh from somewhere in the crater beyond a green flame wrapped around a skull with what appears to be two uh broken eye sockets as both of you see oh, uh, oh no this seemingly charge forward attempting to find purchase in combat and instead blindly slamming into this bit of debris ha <laughs> idiot oh uh, as it then lowers a uh what appears to be some form of spell towards you Fenris. oh cool my favorite uh that is a 19 to hit that'll hit you take Eight fire damage. Oh, ho, ho, ho. oh my god! A fire ray swings blindly towards you, Serena. You kind of look over, ready to fight this new combatant, and you notice it doesn't even seem to recognize, or doesn't even seem to see that you are there, but sees the rest of your companions. Uh, not attacking the undead. I see how it is. Oh, yes, yeah, it's in solidarity. Yeah. <laughs> uh, it is now Ash's turn. Um, 
this this foot here is still active, right? Correct. It is an active foot. Uh, oh shit! I need to roll the kick, Cora. <laughs> no. Uh, that is a nine to hit, Coro. I'm good. As the thing fails to kick you, you wore your shin guards. Hell yeah. It is now Ash's turn. Okay. Um, I am also going to Ray of Frost that foot. Alright. <laughs> oh, Unfortunately. No. Unfortunately, you miss the foot, mm. uh, as it seems to be a little too agile and avoids the Ray of Frost. Mm. The ones are stacking up, kids. Not the ones. Go back to the 20 guys. I missed the start. And I am assuming I cannot cut the corner here? Correct. Not that one. Okay. Uh, you can, uh, as a, a part, or as just a free action, get rid of the ice here if you want to remove the difficult terrain for yourself. Okay. Sure. I will do that. Uh, as you kind of, with a, a slight twitch of your hand, manage to melt the ice that you snapped into place. Uh, do you will... want to move or do you want to stay there? I will. I'll just. I'll move. And, uh... mm, I'll stay put. Oh, fair enough. All right. And top of the turn order is Kana uh, Kanato. Okay. I'm going to do it like a running slide and kind of try and distract the foot, uh, giving you uh, flanking before taking another shot between Serena's legs at this weird skull thing. And I'm gonna double knock again uh, the arrow. No! No, you will not! <laughs> not in this game, you will not! <laughs> I'm gonna take uh, my multi-shot. It has been knocked. It cannot be unknocked. <laughs> <sighs> so with a 21 and a 22. 21 and a 22? You see it reflexively try to throw up what you can identify as a shield spell, but you still hit it. With both? Yep, with both. The first one for 10, second one for 1. Good damage, but it isn't still unfortunately up. I, I'm like doing my best to kind of like, just kind of keep the foot away, but like distract it. <laughs> uh, next up is Koro. Okay. I am going to. Oh man, I I don't like the the looks of this skeleton thing, the skull thing that just casted a really harmful spell. What would it take for me to pick up the foot and throw it at it? <laughs> okay, um, I suppose uh, just give me an unarmed attack to kind of grab it, and then a right. strength uh, check to try and throw it. Oh, that was so close. Ten. Uh, ten. Does flanking uh, make it a twelve? Flanking just makes it a twelve. So wow, yeah. I love you, Evie. <laughs> Let's go. The the tiny little foot. <laughs> and I'm going to throw this foot like a shoe at someone. <laughs> you said athletics? Yes. All right. Not the greatest at that. But I'm pretty amazing. 15. Hey! <laughs> It's a hit on the creature. Uh, it's a oh. D4 plus strength. D4 plus strength? Excellent. Uh, it's going to be a D4 minus one. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> oh, boy. Got this. Hey, I have three. Hey, Next hey, hey. Uh, you do three severed foot damage. Nice. Um, to both the severed foot and the weird flaming skull. And it kills the foot. Hey, nice. Oh, oh there we go. Uh, do I still have my bonus action despite the, the shenanigans? Yeah, I will say you do. Let's go. I am going to Kirby down B slide. Right here. Oh, boy. And I'm going to do my second punch on this thing. I love okay. this. I love this so much. Ooh, nine. That will unfortunately Ooh. miss. It's Ugh. tiny. Eh. <laughs> it is but a skull. Uh, is that your turn, Serena? Or, uh, it? It's now Serena's turn. Oh, so. oh, oh, I want to be a, a seven-foot-tall cool vampire lady, but yes, it doesn't look good. <laughs> I have to settle with being a, 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 a tiefling twink. Nah, in the oh, next life, man. You did this! I know, I know. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so my turn now? Yep. 
Also, shout out to someone in chat who said Chikoro with the chonkla. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I love it. Uh, look at all chat. Uh, Serena looks a little bit worse for wear, but again, her wounds slowly start to heal up just the tidiest amount. She looks at this zombie and she kind of sighs. <sighs> if only you would bleed. Creepy, but uh, okay. She's gonna move to flank. Hey, tactics. Well, you didn't leave the you didn't leave the threatening error, so it doesn't uh, provoke. It's a Twenty-one. That's definitely it. Oh my lord. Four slashing is just enough to bring it down. Let's go. Nice. It natural ones at zombie save. Um, so please give me a D five. Okay. You got this. I believe in you. A one. A one? A one? How does a hand treat you in this situation? I do not want a hand. I'm sorry, but you're getting a hand. <laughs> you're getting a hand and you'll like it. As the hand pops off the zombie after you... How would you like to bring this one low outside of the hand managing to survive? Uh, I think she just goes for the traditional just cleave. popping off first you see its claws kind of the whole hand kind of look left and then right trying to identify who is going to attack as it is Ben versus turn all right I guess I'm gonna hit the foot because it needs to die uh all right let's swing swing bada bada swing uh 17 that is a hit let's go for six. How would you like to follow the separate hand? Uh, I would like to just stab it on the ground. I've, I've had it with these things. I'm going to kill it. <laughs> oh, All man. right. As you bring it low and it's no longer moving. All right. Uh, is that your turn? That is my turn. Uh, well, wait. Uh, I would like to move if we're still in combat. Yep. Uh, I yep. will go. There's still the skull. I will go. Wait, yeah. the skull is still up? Oh, yeah. I missed it. I didn't hit it. That's this thing right here, right? Oh, no, I did yep. hit it. I hit it with the chocolate, but I didn't hit it with my Yeah, the foot's right. dead underneath it. All right. I'm at least going to get in its face so that it can't. Or better. Yeah, because it can't move. I'm going to go here. Oh, no. Better yet. I will move one, two, three, four, five. I'm going to flank. I got you. As you move towards it, in a similar way to Serena, you notice what looks like strange, uh, almost necromantic energy seems to be regenerating its wounds. Oh. Shit. Okay. That is not good. Did you call that out already? That's, am I the you just, oh, you I just to see this. Oh, yeah. got it. Serena didn't see it. It's just similar to their no, it was it. You, see, you see this. Uh, got it. Fenris, as you move close. And it's the enemy's turn. Focus your fire here! It's trying to regenerate! All and that'll right. be turn uh you see it gather some strength its mouth opens as it lights itself with green flame and attempts to charge into uh ash oh. again seemingly blindingly missing and hitting this wall <laughs> it will then fire a shot towards you koro uh -oh. Uh, as you see another ray of fire uh, strike out for 13 to hit. Misses. I just, I like full on matrix dive out of the way. Then that's miss. Uh, that's the enemy's turn. It is now Ash. Oh, um. Remind me, ranged spells, can I use them when they're that close to yeah. me? Okay. Uh, you'll have disadvantage, though, you'll, if this, it's yeah. within five feet. Okay. Um, okay, I will I will take a I will take a step back. Just a little bit. Does that provoke an attack? Um it 
doesn't seem to see you, at least in full, okay. and seems to oh, wildly okay. swing uh, its attack of opportunity completely missing. Okay, um, I will now then cast Ice Knife. All right. Ooh. 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 <laughs> All right. How's eight damage? Eight damage? Okay. But it has to make the save or take oh, the right. fold. Yeah. Uh, you can see that this creature, uh, in a similar thing that you've seen, kind of people who have ventured the void who are a bit more resistant to um, magic in a similar way, this also seems to be pretty resistant to magic in general. However, it does still fail its save with advantage, so you get it. Uh, you get the full damage. Nice. Awesome. Uh, that is... That's your whole turn, Ash? Yes. Final turn. Uh, I want to run and hide between my allies before taking a shot at it. All right. I, I'm just abandoning you, Ash. I'm sorry. I, I can't let this thing hit me. Don't worry, you're small. I understand. <laughs> oh, it's, it's, it's coming. It's, it's loading up. It's charging up. 20. Uh, that is a hit. Six. Six nice. damage. Still up. Yeah, I use my bonus action to cower. All right. <laughs> uh, next up is... Koro. Uh, you know Captain Falcon from the hit video game Super Smash Brothers? Sure, yeah. I'm yeah. going to try and go for one of those knee kicks that he does famously. <laughs> All right. Into this thing. Oh, yes. Uh, 15 15 to hit will hit all right eight oh my god i think it's max damage eight uh eight bludgeoning damage to it eight bludgeoning okay good damage As i knee this thing into the earth and then i kind of kind of do like a aura 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 like multiple swings into the the stone and this thing as i go for another strike Oh, that was almost a natural one. That was scary. 19. Oh, man. That's a hit. Uh, an additional five. Good damage. Uh, it's, fortunately, it's still up. Oh, Lord. Uh, is that your turn? If I move one space up, does that provoke? Uh, it already used its reaction this turn, so... No. Oh, sick. I'm going to move... There's no difficult terrain. I'm going to actually dart around and I'm going to actually run up next to you, Ash. Hello, friend. Captain right. Cover ran away. <laughs> Serena, you, it is your turn. Would your you spells like are a... pretty cool. <laughs> Thank you. Would you like your a dragon born in these? Cool. <laughs> I try my best. Again, my wound slowly knitting back together. Gross. <laughs> Stop that. Hey, man. That's how what I do. Don't be <laughs> jealous. <laughs> I'm not jealous. I can do it, too. <laughs> Just like, you know, a little necromatic, like, you know, band-aid on your wounds. You know, totally normal stuff. Um, She seems more hesitant to charge in against this creature, and she's going to yank her javelin out of the dead zombie here, and she's going to throw her javelin at it. Okay. Fourteen. Oh, Fourteen is barely a hit. Oh. oh. For six piercing. Six piercing. Unfortunately, the piercing doesn't do as much damage, but it's it's still unfortunately up. Hey man, it's a hit. It did something. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, with that, it's Fenris's turn. Assuming you're done, you don't. If you don't want to move. Uh. I think she will still move. Okay. She's more cautious about charging in on this guy. But she does get closer, kind of like trying to watch it and trying to gauge where it's going to go. He seems confused. I can't tell who he's going to attack next. All right. And with that, it is Fenris' turn. Uh, I will move here and use my glaive with range to punch his dude in the face. Okay. With a very sharp object. That's a 21! Uh, that is very much a hit. That's 11 damage. 
Give me one second to roll this. <gasps> How would you like to do it? Uh, so as Serena calls uh, out that uh, this thing is weird and looking around at who to attack next, as it's trying to spot its next attempt, uh, it is going to feel a glaive crack into its skull and then crack again and again until it eventually bursts into a million pieces. As it does, uh, it kind of shatters onto the ground. You notice its kind of upper jaw seems to only have kind of two crooked teeth left. And Serena, as you look at it, you get the sense that whatever kind of undead creature it was, when you found it, it was already significantly injured. As initiative is over. Is everyone all right? I have felt better, but give me a few moments and I will feel much more. Femris is going to just look down at the blood coming out of his armor <laughs> and hold that and put away the glaive. I, uh, I do not think this creature was in its fully strengthened form. It almost killed the two of you. Took a hell of a beating. Ash kind of carefully, you know, steps around the zombies, making sure not to step in any of the nastiness. And they they just say, I, I really think we should finish uh, our business here. I want to go home. Serena grabs her javelin. Fend this yes. and do you require healing? Or will you be okay? I will be okay for now. But at some point, yes, I would appreciate it. If it worsens, let me know. Of course. Although that thing, it was not at full strength as you pointed out, which means something else might be here that it fought. I am going to pick up this skull and I'm going to put it in a sack that I have. Um, for Zan, what are the rules on my regeneration outside of battle? Um, it would be uh, every minute that passes, you get six. Okay. If we do not mind waiting another minute, uh, I will feel well I'm enough gonna... to continue, I think. As Serena says that, arrows. Kanato, and you begin to collect arrows, you hear a soft, almost breathing noise that catches your ears and passive perception as down the way you feel a strange pulse uh, emanate from the uh, black construct that's peeking from this dais. What would anyone, you guys like to do? Anyone have any idea what is going on Should we roll? <laughs> sure. I mean, you guys can investigate at your wish. Did you mention specifically about the, the pull you're feeling, or are you just walking over there? Uh, I'm mostly walking over there just asking uh, what I said. Uh, again, if I remember the contract correctly, we don't necessarily have to stop what's here. We just have to investigate it. As you move over... Um, anyone with Arcana, please give me a check, uh, can give me a test, um, however, anyone with History can give me a test with disadvantage. Proficiency. Uh, yes, if you're trained in it. Yeah. yeah. That's nerd stuff. Yeah. <laughs> why, why read book when I can do sport? I agree, Monty. Thank you. Uh, double it 15s, though. For Kanato and Ash, as you move up, you feel a twinge in your nostrils, some ill effect that catches your nose. And while the rest of you kind of smell a faint burning of ozone slightly, both uh, Kanato and Ash, you detect the effects of an anti-magic field has dissipated. And it would appear this massive dome, the empty space and whatever's in it was shunted through Cold Rock's defenses in here. For what reason or purpose, you can't quite tell. Man. 
sorry, to clarify, it was shunted into Cold Rock or out of Cold Rock? Shunted into Cold Rock here. Yeah. So from, oh, who knows where to here? Oh, that's not good. Man, imagine you said shunting. that the the anti magic field has dissipated. Correct. Okay. Have any of us seen anything like this before? Like whether it's anti magic or something being forced. I will into say. Rock? I will say probably Koro would be the closest one. Koro, you working with your father in the kind of compacting trash before he uses mm. his acidic breath to melt it, has seen areas where things are purposely shunted in for materials and resources. Uh. This looks like an uncontrolled burst, and you are certain that this should, the defenses around Cold Rock should not allow this to happen. This seems like some sort of defensive error. This should not be here. Random things like this are not meant to occur. That is what the defenses are for. They are not weak defenses either. Whoever did this is well versed in those defenses. The question is, what did they bring in? And where is it now? Anato. Oh. Give me give me a wisdom save. Oh <gasps> no. Oh buddy, come on. Uh -huh. oh, oh no. no! Anato, you look over and you feel this strange pulse emanate again. Uh, noticing for a moment that Ash and Fenris don't seem to notice it. What appears to be in the onyx protrusion almost creates an eye within the gross material that seems to be emanating from it as it opens and looks towards you. You find yourself listlessly moving towards the thing. The rest of you see this. Oh, not what Kanato sees, but sees Kanato kind of sliding down the dome and towards the center of the crater. Kanato, a moment. We don't know what that is. Kanato, you don't hear them. As this thing seems to lock its gaze onto you. Uh, I'm going after him if he doesn't stop. Sure, absolutely. Kanato? I will grab him. Likewise. I'll pick him up. You both very easily grab him. <laughs> as Kanato, you shake out of your state. What? As you look back towards the thing, you no longer see that eye. Yeah. I'm like holding you in the air. What has come over you? Uh, I'm not sure. I just felt like it was meant to be. I should go there. Oh, no. Ash, are you picking up any kind of arcane signature off of that eye? Am I? Can I roll for that, or is it just what Absolutely, we already Absolutely, you can know? roll for that. Okay, what would that be? Uh, be an arcana. Ooh. What do I see with my magic sight? Smelling it, your eyes widen. Reminds you of the smell that you painfully remember being stuck in the void of space. A thing made of anti-magic. Whatever it is, I... I don't like it. Something about it. There's anti-magic here. The second you say that, he is going to try to push both of you, Serena and Ash, back away. Then we're done. We Serena, done we can. as you say that, Serena, and again, Kanato, give me wisdom saving throws. Huh? Uh, oh, no! <laughs> Serena, you somehow kind of get stuck stuck in a moment of time in your memory as you recall this object being very painful to your memory, a time before you were able to collect yourself and understand your surroundings and remember things. This existed in that time before then, a time the yellow, and it seems to paralyze you for the moment as you let go of Kanato who seems to sprint towards the thing, its eye transfixed on you, Kanato. Oh, God. Is, is Kanato small enough that I can mage hand him? Unfortunately, no. not. That's only five pounds. Okay. Can, can I sprint after him? Absolutely, you may. All right. Um, Kanato, if you could please give me a dexterity saving throw and then a, a base attack for you, I suppose, if you're going to try to grab him. Okay, got it. Um, as I'm running off, 
Ash, stay with Serena. Get them out of here. Uh, you see Serena is stunned for a moment. And so she's not responding. Uh, do you want my glaive attack? Will that suffice? No. You can use the glaive's polearm to try and, like, catch him if you want. Like, the, the, the staff part if you I, want. I will, just roll a, to you. I will just roll a strength check if you want. Or an athletics. Sure. Try the way. It. Okay. 24. Oh. Oh. Um, you, Kanato, um, kind of, again, snap out of your stupor as both of you look up and in a blink of an eye, this strange black obelisk of onyx has seemingly teleported in an instant in front of your face, Kanato. Uh, I want to immediately try and run away. As whilst have my cognitive thoughts. As you kind of look towards the thing, uh, Fenris, please give me a history test. Or check. Oh, boy. Um, 15? 15? You see the thing uh, now kind of moving a strange eye as what appears to be some mark uh, or rune spikes through it, and you recall a time during the Battle of Hinan, this being a projectile explosive. Oh. oh Please give me no. dexterity saves, both of you. No! <laughs> and suddenly he remembers what these are. <laughs> oh, God. 18, how? Oh, wow! You Bosco's move out of the way, makes me afraid. <laughs> trying to drag Kanato with you, as Kanato, you take a total of six damage. Oh! Please give me a Constitution saving throw. Oh no! Please. Oh, that's good. That's good. As it strikes into you, you feel piercing shards of onyx blast and explode and as you fall to the ground this strange object no more all of you see the water that is pouring through this unknown ceiling river fall to the ground and no longer move as ash you notice whatever strange ozone burning smell has now very quickly begun to dissipate Canister does not look good. Um, like am I gasping. Still kind of frozen, or am I? You're you're fine now. Whatever effect was keeping you still for a moment has faded. Kanato, I'm gonna run in the moment I notice that uh, Serena kind of shakes out. Of, like I'm I'm watching from the edge. I'm like I'm not diving in. I, I, will I will rush over. I will start dragging him back towards the group so that Koro can take a look. Hey hey hey. Are you with me? Barely. Okay, okay. Uh, how many fingers am I holding up? Two. Hey, you got it. That's pretty good. <laughs> okay, that's me. I, I immediately kind of run a hand down, like, kind of your forehead and kind of down your body, and I'm going to cast Cure Wounds on you. Okay. Uh -huh. Hey, I heal you for six. Nice. There you go. As you go to heal him, Koro, you see the black shards almost vibrate with energy as the healing is halved. Oh, that's so bad. <laughs> oh, you no. look over. Mm -hmm. You look over, Ash, as you see the shards embedded in his skin are that of anti-magic. As you oh, also no. tell his innate magical ability is failing. Shit. All really? of you... All of you then see and hear a massive rumble. The explosion, as well as the breaking of whatever shunting field was here, seems to rattle and shatter the inside or the entrance to this cave as it begins to collapse. Everyone, move now! I'm I'm Gotta picking try up. and stagger to my feet. I'm picking you up. You're a small creature. I'm picking you up and carrying you. All right. I'm, uh, I'm, feel free to move. Uh, feel free to move one move, move, full movement at a time, and I'll let you know what happens. Will this consider the dash action, or is yeah, it is just this a double move? Yeah, okay, absolutely. Take the dash action. All right, that means oh, okay. I can get to um, here oh. and here. So you're coming with me, Kanato. Yep. First turn gets me here. So just for confirmation, it's been a couple minutes, right? Yeah, you're fully healed. Absolutely. 
Cool. Uh, <laughs> you, you. you were kind of wounded when you froze, and then when you woke up, you were no longer wounded. So, cool. question, do the shards look similar to the ones on my body? Uh, they look as though they are made of the same material of the chains uh, that are in your body. Well, twinsies. <laughs> as you run to there, you notice the front of the cave entrance completely cave in as the building falls to shambles and you're seeing more debris beginning to fall on top of you. It looks as though it might be thinnable enough to, or thin enough to break through it, but you'd have to rush now. Go fast. We don't have much time. Everyone, ahead! We have to break through! Alright, uh, go ahead and move. You guys right. can get a dash action. I will... So I go right there. Who's carrying Kanato? Uh, it is Fenris. Okay. So dash lets us go double, right? Correct. Yeah. So you can yeah. go 60 if you're 30. Nice. All right, as you move up towards there, Serena, very quickly and easily vaulting the cliff with your massive stature, you see the water now on the ground, still moving, as you feel paralyzed to move past it and break through the debris of rubble as it comes collapsing down, closing off your entrance. Oh, shit. You all begin to cough and wheeze for a moment, trying to figure out a way out, until a few moments later, you hear, You guys all right in there? Huh? Dalmic! Is that you? Hey boys, they're in here! As you see what looks like a number of cackler hands begin to chip away and break the expo or break the broken down wall until a few moments later you see piercing uh, afternoon light from Cold Rock's sky pierce through the rubble. <laughs> as you see four cacklers, come on, hurry up! The whole place is going down! <sighs> I'm so happy to see you. Let's move. I'm going to try to hand uh, Kanato up to them so that he gets out first. All right. You manage to move through as more parts of this ru already rubbled building continue to break in on themselves. But you do manage to fully escape without further harm. I'm going to make sure that Ash is making their way out. I'm just going to make sure everyone can turn around and go, Ash, are you okay? Yeah, I, I, I made it out. Okay, watch your head. Oh, are you guys all right? Well, I'm you see glad the cacklers looking up towards you with concern. We should probably get more clear of this place. It may not be safe. All right, no. Hey, uh, there's a tunnel here. Leads you right out of the cups. I imagine you want to get out of here as soon as possible. Yes, and you should be very careful as well. Thank uh, you for saving us. I owe of course, you one. Uh, uh, we're not allowed to banner hands, but... Uh, I'm glad we could help. <laughs> You're good kids. As I'm being carried, can I quickly attempt to try and cast mending on like my clothes a little bit? Go ahead. Yeah, I mean, does it work? Uh, give me a d20 roll. Oh no! Oh boy! <gasps> this is this is this is bad. This is Kanado's very bad, not at all good day. <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't seem to work. <sighs> Yep. Man. Your dad dies, you get evicted, and now you... Wow. <laughs> oh, Gosh. Goody. And Evie and Zan are friends? Yep. <laughs> well, they used to be. I don't know anymore. We'll check. As you all manage to, I imagine, shuffle as far away from this place as you can, as quickly as you can, uh, you see that the thing that seemed to harm Kanato isn't doing any further damage, but also isn't doing him any favors. Would you guys like to head straight towards the Market 3, or where would you guys like to go? I mean... Is that where we can find the best help for Kanato? Um, you know that uh, there are a number of potion shops, but you also know that Koro's mother is a potion maker. Yeah, I would... You could also attempt to go to the Temple District if you wanted to. Could... I mean... I don't want to split the party, so we probably have to pick one. Um, let's take let's take him to my mom. I think I, I, I think going to your mom makes the, going on yeah. too. I think going to your mom is the best bet. We had until like tomorrow evening to show up at the. Correct. Location. We have, have until this evening. We have until this oh, evening. This so if if we take him there, and so he can at least get treated, then some of us can go deal with it if he needs to be treated. Cora, you mm -hmm. also know the yeah. deadly serious situation. If you miss that meeting, the contract is void. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 
Yeah. I don't have to attend, right? Someone else can go cover for me. Let me take him to my parents. The rest of you can go resolve the contract. Do we know if the devil contract will be null and void if he's not there with us? You are certain, uh, Ash, as you were the one who kind of proofread it. Kana oh, yeah. Kanato needs to be there. Shit. As uh, Kanato's yeah. the one who signed it. Yep. How we'll, like... we'll drag them over to Kanato if we have to. Uh, you, however, Koro, you're certain because it's kind of, your house is kind of on the way in Banner Hands, you could stop by your house before going to the Markets 3. Okay. Push comes to shove, we could try and get the guy and bring him to my place. Yeah, exactly. As well, that's another option, yeah. If okay. it's on the if it's on the way, stopping doesn't mean too much. But here's a question above game for you, Zan. Because I'm afflicted with something similar, I imagine that I know that this is not really something that anyone's been able to treat yet. Uh, correct. Oh, this is fun. Yeah. <laughs> if I might make a suggestion, I listening. I do not believe that even Cora's mother, as skilled as she is. Excuse be... me, my mom is very good at healing people, I mean... With all due respect, okay. I, I, I have not met anyone that can handle this type of affliction. Fenris, you are able to know that healing potions would at least fix his current state, even if it can't get rid of these things. If we are going to see your mother, it is to get him as close to healthy as possible, but we cannot cure him completely. Just be aware. I want to reach to, like, one of them, like, maybe sticking out of my arm or something and try and pull it out. I know it's not going to work, but I want to just experiment. It seems as though it's fused to your skin. Ugh. Oh. All right. Well, Al, I'm not doing that again. So I guess we're going to head to Cora's mother's house. Rushing towards uh, the house takes you about 40 minutes to get there as you all arrive in, at the front of Koro's house. I just immediately, like, kick in the door like, Mom, holy shit! <laughs> <laughs> Mom! What's wrong? Son. Mom! <sighs> Mama, we... Something bad has happened. Where is father? Where does he go? He is in the basement. What? You were just at the funeral. What happened? A lot. I need to talk to him right away. Hey, you see her look over towards Kanato? It gets into the basement. I will get the potion for him. I will carry him to the basement. All of you go. I immediately beeline it down. It's it's a <laughs> staircase I've used like several times my entire life. <laughs> you're basically um, as you're moving steps. down. <laughs> as you're moving down, Ash, uh, you're kind of the last one to kind of move in. You mm -hmm. notice on top of trying to get potions, Koro's mom is closing window window shutters. As you kind of see what looks like a small group of people outside paying attention to what you're doing and seemingly Koro's mom is trying to hide whatever business is happening. Okay. Um, and can I help close the shutters? Absolutely. I will uh, help close the shutters then. You can even mage hand those if you wanted. Sure. All right. Let's do it with a little bit of pizzazz, I guess. Oh, I love that. As you're doing so, you notice what looks like a few people of more of a fiendish nature that look much more similar to the tax collector kind of poking in a little too curiously towards what's happening as uh, Koro's mother shoots them a very nasty look. They seem to fade away. Mm. <laughs> Don't okay. mess with Mama Koro. She has killed before. and She will, <laughs> she will do it again. <laughs> She'll go back to jail. <laughs> you move into the basement with uh, Kanato as you see Koro, your father, kind of waking up in his draconic form. What? What's happening? Dad, 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 I need you right now with me. <laughs> what is that? Kanato, what happened? Mom has him. I... You, you, you need to listen to us. We found something very bad. Ash, as well as uh, Koro's mother, runs in, um, applying a few healing potions to try and slowly bring him back to full health. I won't tell you how I got involved, and you're going to get mad at me, but please. <laughs> we found something, a large dome that was shunted into Cold Rock through its defenses. It was some sort of black shard thing. It exploded. It lured them in, and then it hit Kamato. I, I don't know what it was, but I've never seen it before. It was like the stuff we bring into the loading bay, but it was different. Uh, 
I don't know. I don't know what the fuss. Oh, this is made of void stone. I can break it. I, I, it, I apologize, Kanato. This will hurt. I'm ready as I can be. You see your father taking a breath as almost practiced. Your mother brings a health potion, holding it at the ready. As all of you see Koro's father use his acidic breath to very pinpoint and precise melt the stone onto your skin, doing just enough to shatter them out of the way as uh, Koro, you help your mother pick the thing out and apply the healing potions to get rid of it. As you look at this, as you look at this in particular, Fenris, you can tell that the stone was slowly sinking into the skin as it did for you, but you were able to move fast enough to get it out. Thank you. Of course, Koro, can... There is a time for asking questions and there is a time for helping. What would be more helpful? How can we help you? She kind of points towards her husband as well. To make a long story short, after the funeral for we were approached, and I, I filled them in on what happened. Sure, I'm not yeah, going to yeah. hide anything. They're my parents. They'll find out somehow and I'll get <laughs> trouble. You got <forward>. grounded. <laughs> <sighs> and that's basically what we found. And we are on the clock. We need to report back to this guy as soon as possible. If it is a fiendish contract, they will be precise with their timing, of course. Of course. I am so sorry. Kanato, this should not have happened to you, especially today. Dad, you need to tell uh, someone about this. This is dangerous. I will get in contact with uh, the people I know from, uh, well, the castle trenched and beyond the frozen gate. Uh, they will he make, they will hear of what has happened as soon as possible. Uh, For now, also... you have an appointment with this fiend. Kanato has an appointment with this fiend. <laughs> No, just, you are not uh, to leave his side. All of you, you must help him. I look towards everybody. I believe that is what we were doing. We're not going anywhere. Absolutely not. Uh, as, as in an agreement, sorry. <laughs> I kind of try and stand up and kind of stretch out my limbs, trying to feel if I can move fully again. You see... Uh... Koro, your mother, hand you as well as Kanato um, both a minor potion of healing. Oh, thank you, Mom. I love you. <laughs> Bless Yay. you. Yay. Go, a new mom. Go, before the, <laughs> go before the fiends uh, redact their contract. Yes, we must run. Let's go. Fenris you notice, Holden. as you get to move, um, Serena, you notice uh, Koro's father sort of uh, blindly look towards your position as he seems almost impressed that you were so willing to help, as though he's kind of misjudged you. Uh, loyalty's a good habit, I say. And as I, I imagine everyone leaves the room, and like I kind of run out, but then immediately kind of grab the door frame, and I turn to my mama to go, do you think we could fit an extra, do you have any extra spare space for a coffin? We'll talk about it later. And I run out the door. <laughs> yes. You not die on me, son, as you close the door. Wait, what did she say? You did not die on me. I think he was a coffin. <laughs> I'm like, mm. do we have room for a coffin? Uh, did, uh, did, uh, is it cool we put a coffin? Not mine. It's a friend's. Not mine. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> It's only like 250 pounds, I swear. It doesn't Jesus any Christ! Place. Oh my god. As you rush towards the Market 3, you see a one of the oldest places on Cold Rock. Three market stalls that have sprawled into an expansive and very well-moneyed market district. However, near the outskirts between the Bannerlands and the Markets 3, you very easily find the tavern that you were tasked with finding this... A tax collector at. Ah, yes. The Sleepy Toad Tavern. Yes, the Sleepy Toad Tavern. There's not even a toad in here. No. Outside the tavern, uh, you notice what looks like the two impish guards kind of look towards you and notice as they open the half-swinging door and kind of motion you that the this uh, person that you're meant to meet is inside already. I'm going in. I I want Serena to go first. She has such a, such a presence. <laughs> <laughs> Serena, you do see that you were invited in. 
which means you're allowed to go. Oh, hell hey, yeah! yeah. <laughs> if you notice as well, uh, she was also invited into the house by your mom. Yep. Coral's mom. Yep. <laughs> Gotta follow the rules. Yep. Gotta follow the rules, man. I don't Can make I ask them. above board, is that actually part of your... Yeah, that's an actual It absolutely is. Wow. So we... Fifth edition, that's actually a rule. Yeah, we had a... Wow, that's amazing. Yep. Forbiddance? Yep. The vampire cannot enter a residence without an invitation from one of the occupants. There it is. <laughs> oh my god, I love it. I love it. That's great. Sorry, Goblin. <laughs> As you rush into the Sleepy Toad... Um, you see what looks like a nightlife slowly beginning to whir uh, to life, but not quite there yet. As the only one who seems to be not one of the workers trying to get the place ready for a busy evening seems to be... Uh, uh, sorry. Levazulek. Levazulek, that's it. Um, who seems to be sitting alone at a private uh, bar as his head kind of motions upward towards the group. Ah, good, you were right. Not without trouble. Oh, was there a problem down in the cups that was uh, difficult? Fenris is going to take a very deep breath in as if he's trying to restrain himself and let someone else tell the story. He looks like he definitely wants to hit this guy. <laughs> I look yeah, towards so the bar. He's like, I want to drink. Please, have yeah. a seat. Drinks are regular price. I think you owe one to Kanato. He, he seems to be confused as he double checks the contract. What? I do not mean in the form of a contract, but simply in what he encountered through your investigation. Uh, what? Uh, I, I. He kind of looks towards you, Koro. Kindness? Makes for a good deal. Better than that of a contract. Uh, barkeep. Uh, one of uh, Fox Drink. Kind of looks confused. Like, is that good enough? Sure. <laughs> you see the barkeep, a uh, rather large uh, fiend himself, kind of rolls eyes. Uh, uh, these new infernals never seem to understand. What do you want? Hey, you're, uh, you're the professor's kid, aren't you? Yeah, yeah. He kind of looks down. It's on the house. What do you need? Something strong. <laughs> on it. As you look down and see uh, Lebuzelek kind of... I, 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 I appreciate you being prompt, but uh, what happened? You seem to be uh, worse for wear. Do you want the, the bad news or the worst news? Uh, news is news. I guess it is perspective. Um, well, uh, I think our defenses are struggling, or there was a freak accident. There was, like, some stunted anti-magic here, and it was brought some stuff that probably shouldn't be here. Yeah, I... I do not believe I understand, or I think I kind of do. Uh, here, please, um, uh, take this. Uh, this might be able to help you. As he puts a fresh piece of scroll, or a fresh blank scroll on the table in an inkwell, and hands you what looks like a small fiend that seems to be an eyeball with six legs attached to it. Mm. Uh, this would help. Sure, I'm gonna sketch the what I can recall of the eye. As you grab the uh, inkwell, you notice the small eyeball fiend seem to jump onto your head as suddenly your your drawing becomes perfect to your memory of what you saw. Oh, whoa, uh, that's cool. Ooh. I love that. That's cool. Okay. Uh, well, I saw this and it was like very influential and I kind of lost my senses and just kind of ran to it. I don't know what it is, what it was trying to do, but then it it kind of blew up on me. 
However it got in here as well, it came with friends. And I'm gonna pour out the skull that I collected from my sack onto the table as well. I see. This is quite troubling indeed. But from the drawings, it looks as though you took care of it. Okay. Care of itself. Oh, that is good. Hopefully no more undead will uh, plague that part of the cups. I will tell the authorities of the good work you have done. Uh, kind of tells you see a heavy, stiff drink has been placed in front of you of what smells like sweet grog. Ooh. I'm gonna uh, definitely take a, a hearty gulp from that. I will uh, contact uh, my authorities and let them know of what you have seen and what you have done. I'm sure it will go uh, good ways at uh, clearing this financial mess. I, again, I'm told to say I am sorry for your loss. I will try to understand what that means in the future. Hey. So. That's an excellent start. You and I both know I'm not getting that money in three weeks. So if any other opportunities to delay this come up, please let me know. I will. I will try to kind of looks towards you, Kanato. Be kind. Well, you're doing a good job so far. He stands up, um, brings the contract back from seemingly nothing, seems to null it out before filing it away in a a uh, a bag on his side, uh, kind of taking a breath. I will be in contact as soon as I can and let you know what the authorities say of the situation. Uh, thank you again for your prompt ventures. <laughs> uh, I am sure we will see each other again. Just to test it out, can I attempt to, like, cast mending again see if i can fix a, like a patch on my clothes anyway it's delayed for a moment but it does work oh that's good at least uh anyone except kanato please give me an insight oh boy um coral you're going to have advantage to this all right soft 20 i'll take the 18 <laughs> <laughs> Coral. Do you want the eight Koro and Fenris, you both notice something strange about the tax collector. You both seem to notice uh, each other noticing something strange before it deduces that some, the tax collector seems to have been hiding something, as though something worries him about the information that you revealed more than the obvious. You also see the small eyeball thing unattached from the top of Kanato's head before following uh following the fiends outside the door and the imps seem to dissipate into the crowd. Mm. Yeah, I immediately like rustle my head and try and get the feeling off. Ugh. <laughs> Don't let me do that again. I was so... Oh. It's not like I let you try to do it in the first place, to be fair. Well, I didn't know I was going to do that. <laughs> I don't you think any of us you. did. You see a the massive infernal barkeep kind of move forward. His skin... A uh, deep purple is uh, from his shoulders protruding a number of uh, strange bone-like protrusions holding a few uh, hand rags to wash cloths as he places a massive food platter of what seems to be fish of some kind. Dig in. It's on the house. <laughs> Fenris is just going to look over to Ash. <laughs> Ash, your ears Ash. literally <laughs> Ash is like eyeballing it. Like, real good. But is trying real hard to let Kanato pick the, what they want first. Aww. As you do, you see what looks like a Thrykreen uh, bard seemingly walk into the front of the tavern as they begin to play a series of to jaunty tunes that are known quite well within uh, Cold Rock as really more uplifting and estranged tunes. This multi-armed creature seems to be a one-person band. Um, I will say Kanato as well as Koro, you recognize this uh, Thrykreen bard as a one-woman show Lucky named Lucky Lane. <laughs> nice. Very quickly as well, 
Uh, you see people beginning to come off of the night shift from the shunted mines. Uh, pretty heavily worse for wear, working 12 hour plus days as they begin to drink a very common, uh, not sweet grog, but ale, simply referred to as Angler's Ale, something new edition. <sighs> you also, uh, Koro, see your father has kind of frequented taverns like this where people are playing a game called Hulma, which is sort of like a, a checkers or not checkers, like a marbles game. Uh, where bets are being kind of brought to and forward. Um, and if I could also get a history check from either, uh, we'll say Fenris or Serena. Uh, history check, you said? Yep. yep. Go ahead, Serena, I'll let you have it. Unless oh, we can both do it. My minus one, 13. I mean, do you do have better than a minus one? <laughs> <laughs> Is it for both of us or just one of us, Dan? Both of you. Okay, cool. Uh, different information pieces. Cool. Four. Excellent. <laughs> All right, cool. Um, you're more, again, concerned about Kanato, kind of keeping yeah. an eye, though. They do seem to be gathering more to their strength uh, as time goes on. Uh, however, for you, Serena, you notice what looks like a number of Yanti uh, walk in, almost slithering in, uh, wearing a number of iconography of pirates that you recognize as Sidewinder's crew. A number of Yanti kind of friendly making remarks uh, in such in a language you don't quite understand, but you have known uh, Sidewinder's crew to be kind of these renegades anti-heroes um, that are seemingly blowing through cold rock at this time. As to what their purpose is, you aren't certain, but it's something you notice. They're called uh, the Sidewinders? The Sidewinders, yep. That's so awesome. What a great name. As just behind them, um, Koro, you see a bounty freshly placed on the board as the music continues to play from the Thrykreen Bard. Aside from that, you guys are able to eat and drink, investigate, or talk as you wish. Question. Would I know the name of the bartender if my if my father comes here all the time? Uh, yeah. Uh, his name, right? <laughs> I went through random uh, devil names. His name is Zorp. Z-O-R-P. Oh, nice. my God. Zorp. <laughs> He's the owner. Uh, you don't know who the owner is. He just seems to be a bartender. All right, cool. Zip, but he's Zip, always Zorp. here. What was the name of the bar again? Uh, the Sleepy Toad. Thank you. I thought it was Sleeping Toad. Oh, uh, no, it's Sleepy. My apologies. It's, it's oh, my Sleepy. Bad. Putting Zorp in my list of characters that we know now. Underlined five times, very important. <laughs> yeah, I was going to say, I've got or, so many names and we're in session one. As you look over, um, you, again, seem to notice this uh, small bounty board on the side um, with a fresh bounty, again, readjusted by some bar patron who kind of laughs at it. Um, as both Koro and uh, Kanato see a pretty sizable bounty placed on the board. 800 platinums worth of bounty. Yeah, yeah, I was going to say, say, is it ironically the exact number that we happen to need perchance? It reads Wanted Captain Crush. Wanted for grand larceny and serial blasphemy. 666 platinum reward. Oh! oh. Alive or banished? Banished? Oh shit. Well, we don't have that level spell yet. Mm. Well... This could be worth looking into. Does that name ring a bell for any of us, especially those that are like from here? None of you have heard this name before. Okay. Can you can you do you have that in text so I can write that down in my notes? Yeah. Captain Crunch. Crush. Crush. That's what I said. Six hundred sixty platinum reward, alive or banished, wanted for. Yeah. Oh, thank you. Is there co-captain Gulp? Is there a picture of them, or is it just text? Unfortunately, I couldn't get a... Oh, no, there's no picture uh, of them. It just seems to be in text. Okay. I couldn't get a picture of uh, them for, for this. So it's just in text. I'm going to draw them on the poster in the notes. <laughs> Did you say there was a picture on it? There's no picture on it. Uh, I will say the, the reward of 666 is an oddly specific number of platinum. Yeah, yeah don't, don't look into that. Yeah, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Just want to uh, point that out. 
Listen, is, it's, is it it's... the kind of thing that you like take off of the board, or you just kind of look at it and note it in your head, kind of thing? Um, it just looks like something you would. It, it, it seems to be a notice. It doesn't seem necessarily being mm. a job posting. Okay. Yeah, this doesn't seem like something that's just gonna fall into our lap, but I'm definitely keeping an eye on this. It's very convenient. Ash waited as long as they could, but they are now snarfing the yeah, fish. Yeah, get the fish. I love the use of <laughs> snarf, a very accurate word. <laughs> uh, do you guys tr want to blow off some steam? Oh, yeah. Uh, yes. Kanatelu oh. is already finished the first drink and has gone up for a second. All right. And um, this is quite unusual for them. They, they're not much of a drinker. As you all blow off some steam after a particularly grueling day of... Uh, Difficult emotions and trying times, you all gain an inspiration. Woo! As all of you appear to be in various states of inebriation, except for you, for except for you, Serena, who seems to be soberly looking after the crew. As uh... I'm not drinking either. I'm, I'm keeping it in Kanado. I think the only Kanado is the only one drinking. <laughs> all right, well, the rest of you enjoy Kanado and cutting loose and having a good time. Come on, on Kanato, you can do it. <laughs> I might play darts, that's about it. All right. Four drinks deep. As it is now relatively late at night, and uh, they aren't going to kick anybody out, but you do see Zorp kind of looking towards your group like, I hey, can't stay here, but you got to go. <laughs> I, I give him like a like like an acknowledging wave, like, yeah, we get it. And... Hey, one, more, get one, more, one more for the road. Come on. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> Come on. Here Who you wants go. to be the one to carry him back home tonight? Uh, I guess Fenris is carrying him. <laughs> Cor was like, no profit. piggybacks. You, you're, you're all so coy. You're, you're, pew, and, 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 and you're punching everyone. All right. So. All right. I think it's time to get some sleep. I shall carry him back home. Fair enough. I suppose. I do sleep below it, after all. Yes, yes, you do. We should... Yeah, I'm gonna be in bed a lot tomorrow. Perhaps it's for the best you have. Is it three weeks now? Yay! <laughs> That's not a lot of time. Ash, you don't have to eat every one of the fish. Do it Ash either. turns or... around with like a like a fishbone tail, like just sticking out of their mouth, <laughs> like mouthful, totally guilty. Uh, Fenris, well, you've seen Ash eat before. It still always shocks you how much Ash can put away and still mm. look remarkably skinny. They've eaten more than you could eat in three or four days, and they still seem to be hungry. Uh, it... Ash, have you ever known what it's like to be full? No, not not really. Never, not what, what say she. You see, not Remington. Hungry? You see, Remington the mouse uh, has eaten some of it and is has a good bit of a belly. Is passed out on his back. <laughs> Look what you did to Remy. Oh, he'll be fine. Oh dear. All <laughs> right. All right. Where's everyone heading for the evening? In the arms of an angel. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. You say you carry him like a football? <laughs> yeah. Oh my god. Sport ball. Sport ball. That's my shtick. Fuck off. <laughs> I'm just joking. Oh, it's your shtick, huh? No, it's it's not. Uh, Cora, well, I imagine I... you want to head back home. Yeah, I'm gonna head back to my family. I have a lot of explaining to do. All right. Um, where do you want to head, uh, Fenris, for the evening? I think he's just going to walk around the city All for right. the most part. Yeah. Um, Ash, where did you want to head to? Uh, after making sure that every plate is uh, almost as clean as it was uh, before it had food on it, Ash will go home. Uh, back to the call up to you as you leave. Hey, you want to be roomies in three weeks? Hey, you can come live with me. Yay. <laughs> <laughs> uh, as you all move your separate ways, exception of you, Serena, uh, carrying uh, Kanato back to your home, uh, you kind of notice the small Kanato um, 
feeling a good bit better after letting loose and relaxing a good bit. It does warm what effectively is a heart for you <laughs> a little bit. Um, until as you begin to walk past the banner hands, seeing a number of people enjoying the nightlife, seeing the mixture of people uh, going about their business, it relieves you a bit that no one seems to be giving you any side eyes of suspicion. They just seem to accept you as you are. A thing that you have are still not used to. And as you walk uh, to the... Or as you kind of separate from Koro, who on the way kind of goes home to uh, his parents, you make your way back to the stairs. And as you begin to walk the steps, getting back towards the late professor's home, you see something that gives you pause. Kanato, you slowly waken just outside and around the corner from your home. You know, only real tie you have left to the professor. Plume smoke as both of you see blazoned in a green fire your home lit ablaze no no, no! we just fucking a two skull or a two toothed floating skull washing above it now fully restored blinking <gasps> away after lighting the blaze you son of and a and for tonight bitch. that's where we're going to call it what the fuck? I should have kept it in all the for? fucking bag. Uh... Now you, now you have to to oh, keep keep from session one. <laughs> <laughs> but, but tell me, is the basement okay? Is my coffee? Oh my god! <laughs> <laughs> uh, you, I suppose you'll have to find out uh, next time. Oh my god! I'm, good session, I'm, Zan. Yeah, Thank very you good for session. coming out. How could you uh, I'm so, Evie, I'm sorry. I promise it gets better for you. <laughs> wow. Yeah, wow. they're friends, by the way. That's how many L's is that? That's one, two, that's four L's in one session. Yeah. Man, you really beat on him. Yeah, what a Damn. cute little fluffy punching bag. Yeah. <laughs> thank Thanks. you, chat, for, for tuning in. Uh, Seriously, thank you, we, we really thank appreciate you, friends, it. for being here. It's, it's, it's okay. There's no pregnant drow. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> also, holy cow, Kizuka Kiza with the 20 tier 1 subs right at the end. Thank you so much, dude. <laughs> <laughs> you <did this. laughs> Opti posted that, like, fucked up, like, taxidermy looking box. <laughs> I love that it's sitting on a chair. <laughs> oh my gosh. This is so good. We should go around the horn real quick, though. That was... Amazing. GTG Maxwell, thank you for the 100 bits. There's the Zan ending I'm familiar with. Yeah, man. I don't know if I missed this. Also, Neko on Parade gifting a tier one sub to Kiza Kakiza. Thank you so much. Holy cow, man. Uh, all right. I'm just going to do these around the horn. Artsy, where can they find you? Uh, Twitch.tv slash Artsy Heartsy. Tuesdays, Fridays, Sundays, I think. Nice. Uh, Shay, do the thing. Um, I mean, I'm here, and then I'm nice. in a different game on Thursday, and I'm there. All right. And that, that's about it. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. Mo Monty, you also do a game on Thursday, don't you? I do. I run it. Uh, nice. I also am uh, streaming on Fridays and Mondays. Finger guns. Nice. Uh, Evie, I'm so sorry. Where where can they find you, sweetie? Crying forever. <laughs> yeah, that's fair. <laughs> Honestly, that's fair. God, that uh, brutal. Lots I, of I, like, I warned Evie. I'm like, this is going to be heavy. I'm sorry, but it gets better. And he was I like, I can't handle it. 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 Definitely no more heavy. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, like a liar. Yeah. <laughs> but, um... So I the good news is we don't need the platinum anymore, right? <laughs> no, we do. We don't have the house to give them to pay it off. Well, there is no more house, so the insurance policy will pay it. Sure. No, we have, yeah. There you oh, go. Like, Ye old insurance. Other, now for our sponsor, Cold Rock Home Insurance. Oh, God. <laughs> and last but uh, certainly not least. Oh, go ahead, Evie. Sorry, I didn't realize yeah, you weren't done. Halo, Tuesdays, Spice Streams, Zan Streams, Hearthsea Streams, Fosco Streams. Check yep. out all of us. We're, we all, we're all we pretty all funny. We all stream. And then Mad Mage on Thursday on Monty's. Woo! 
And probably Pokemon at some point this week. Maybe Wednesday. Hey, all right. Yeah, maybe. We might do... Yeah, we might say just... Yeah, you're going on a trip. So Friday doesn't work. It's it's fine, though. Even though I'm on a trip next week, I'll still have access to a laptop, so I will still be able to play. Nice. Level five complete. I wow. Play. Oh, my God. That's crazy. Oh, Shit. Lord. Maximum mum moog. Wait. Thank you. <laughs> what? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> there it is. Uh, thank you for the 200 bits. I miss sealing the high heavens with everyone. Hopefully, you can find the gifts I left where I went. I, I would love to see that. Uh, and last but certainly not least, Zan, what a heck of an intro to Cold Rock. Where can they find you and what are you normally up to when you're not running this? Uh, you can find me on Twitter at Zandy underscore Grim, if you so choose, and for long as Twitter lasts. <laughs> we don't want to talk about that. Mm -hmm. uh, tomorrow, I will be streaming Mech Warrior Online on this very stream um, from about 1.30 p.m. to a time of uh, when I want to stop or it's time to do Halo, which I'll be on with you guys at 7.30 on this channel still as well, mm -hmm. uh, as well as at Bosco's, because um, we all kind of do multi-stream thing. Yep. Um, no Unexpectables this Wednesday. Uh, art stream. Art stream this Wednesday. We got art. There will be art. Same same time, right? Yeah. Uh, yeah, right. Start 7 p.m. start time. There you go. Uh, so I'll help out with that. Um, that'll be fun. And then Thursday, I'll be on Mad Mage uh, with Evie, Shay, Monty's running it. Um, I think I'm beating a demonic clown to death with a bucket, if I recall. <laughs> yep. <laughs> nice. Like a child. That'll be a good time. It literally has child in its name. Oh, boy. Um, okay. And then aside from that, you can see me back here next week, same time, with all of us. Nice. I'm so excited. Also, I we have too. now a, a new enemy for life, which is that fucking skull. That fucking skull needs to die immediately. Oh, oh my You should have learned from our Mad Mage campaign, like, honestly. <laughs> yeah, yes. but Koro well, doesn't know shit, man. Yeah. I was getting so upset when the, the skull, I was like, oh, it's gonna fucking come back and we're gonna have to fight it again. And then, yep. no, lo and behold... It, it did something before we could fight it again. How did it yeah. know which house was yours, man? Did it just it, go around? It, listen, I, I, it's got a purpose, I'm sure. We'll figure it out. Yeah. Uh, hi, Ramir, with the 100 bits. Try new Angler's Ale, the Homer's an Insurance Edition. We cover only your drunkenness. Great. And Thanks, uh, Ramir. <laughs> Zan, any last, any last minute words before we raid somebody? Uh, thank you guys so much for, for joining us. Uh, thank you, players, for being here. Um... Thank you I, for I know running. this was very much a downer intro when I'm usually a very upper intros, but I, I promise. I love. We'll... I just want to point out. I talked to Zan, and Zan's like, you know, I'd like a change of pace. I wouldn't mind like a nice uplifting game. And then we start this <laughs> off, and I'm like, you sure, Zan? Are you, you sure? Really? What? <laughs> some family. You gotta start. You gotta start. Wholesome so fun. Uplift. Fair enough. Right? Fair enough. Yes. Oh, you boy. have a loving family, Monty. Yeah, it's, yeah, it's great for you. I'm the only one taking W's, but <laughs> yeah, at the same time, basically. Hey, I, I have a cute pet rat. You do. You have a cute pet. Monty's over here like, I got a cool family. <laughs> Meanwhile, I'm all scarred up. Shay's dead. Evie got jacked up today. Like, what the <laughs> fuck? Anato has a seven foot five. Is that it? Seven, seven foot six. six. Seven foot six. Apologies. A vampire friend. I think it's a W. I think it's a win, <laughs> yeah. I it's mean, a win for all of you guys. You have a seven foot six vampire, you know? Yeah. Yeah. You're, you're. What is it? So, three two... and a half times my size almost? Oh, God. <laughs> so, uh, today's a little bits of the very end. Um, today's session is going to be called Death and Taxes because that's excellent. Of course. Um, but secondly, I can finally reveal the name of the campaign, which is Stalwart Souls. Hey, Ooh. stalwart hey. souls. Hey, there's why there's nothing. Okay, I was wondering if something was going to be at the top. Yep. There we go. Uh, thank you, ah. GTG Maximo, for doing the art on the map. Uh, oh. Thank you, Hartsey, for doing the overlay and uh, getting little icons for the players. And thank you, Brachizoid, for doing the, the PC art. Yay. Nailed it. Yeah. That's <laughs> good. Oh, it's good. Uh, Bracky was in chat earlier. I don't know. Bracky's still, still here. Right? Yeah, they're still here. Is Bracky yeah, still yeah, Bracky's about yeah. Yeah. Really. There's Bracky right there. Sorry, also... <laughs> sorry for all the revisions. <laughs> oh boy. Bracky's used yeah, to it. He's Bracky's quick. He's a professional. Yeah, he knows what he's doing. Dude, Bracky and Citric are in the same place at the same time. That's breaking me. Is that uh, loud? It's not. <laughs> uh, Mark, thank you for the 100 bits. Hey, nowhere to go but up from here, right? I, I, I presume so. You never know what a Zan campaign. 
You think you're at the bottom, and then he cuts the bottom out from under you. Uh, no. But yeah, let's let's raid somebody, Zan. Do you have anybody in particular you want to? I don't have anyone to raid. So I have a recommendation. He's a he's a friend of the channel, Unexpectables. Our buddy SciFry is streaming Street Fighter Six. If we want to hit okay. him up. Yeah, let's uh, do that. Yeah, you have to post it for me. Yeah, I got you. Uh, okay. Gotta type it in here. What's a raid message? That's a good question. Beating a dead fox. I was gonna say poor. Oh man. <laughs> what does the fox say? <laughs> <laughs> Nothing. Not a <laughs> damn thing. You beat him cry. senseless. Okay, it's Evie's turn to add a language proficiency into his character sheet of crying or sobbing. I, 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 I don't know why. It's a bit more than oh, crying. That's only a few seconds. I will see you either tomorrow or next week. Goodbye, everyone. Goodbye. Goodbye. Bye bye. Raid yeah. message is pain. Oh, just just, just pain. Just pain. Pain. All right. See you guys next week. Bye, guys.